slash Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere and there's also a PayPal, Patreon, Crypto and Thanks button in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patrons, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to Amish Earther, Giuseppe Montesano, Naughty Thumbnails, Mitch Kennedy, Original D-Rose, Rod, The Names Burley, Twad Wassel, Jason Hornsby, Christoph Fournier, Flat Earth Travolta, JMLS24, Unimento, M Iron26, Endless, Flat Earth Sage, Golden McKinnon, Phoenix Rising 86, Retro Bill, More Books, Canna Bear, Bogey, Michael Khan, John Kays, Patrick Gunnels, Banter, Mel B. Styles, Harry Blade, Mobile Max 777, Rob W., Reese Pound, Dale West Watson, Maria Neelands, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, Henrik 86, Abraham Hamid, Skeptic 936, Life is Short, Texas Mike, Tina Baker, David Wayne Foster, and Dank. So another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now I will hand over to whoever is in Discord and Google so you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for today's live show. It was that short clip you did, right? It was like eight minutes or something. So basically it's just past, talking past each other then if he doesn't understand it, right? Yeah, if he doesn't understand how celestial navigation works and he's asking me why we would put the star on the ground because he doesn't understand it, then you, what can you do at that point? Yes. But, a lot. I guess. But I guess we're at least knowing what the problem is, right? Not a problem for me. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. I've got no desire no. to go well, forth educating Bev. Do you know what I mean? If he comes here and spouts his nonsense, he'll have it addressed, like anybody. But in terms of, well, that's a problem. Is it? Is it really? Well, the problem as to why, you know, we're talking past each other, so to say. I mean, it's only a problem for him because he doesn't understand celestial navigation. Well, that's his problem, not mine. And I guess this goes in other areas, too, like when we talk to, like, the ballers, right? Like, they don't understand perspective, they don't understand a lot of things, right? But isn't this something that we, isn't this part of the point of why we're refining our arguments and stuff like that so that they can understand, so that they can get it, so we can get more proficient on getting this across to people that don't understand otherwise? You are. Oh, you didn't get that? No. Well, like... Refining our arguments and refining how, uh, refining how we talk to people and try to get across to people information isn't part of that, like trying to make it more easier for people to understand and to get? Yes, but it just happens naturally. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And at times it does seem like some people just won't get it or something, or they just won't see it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know what else to say to you other than <laughs> that's that's how it's that's how it naturally progresses, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't know what to say either. I'm just, I guess, talking. I guess. I guess I had to go. But the I didn't watch the beginning of it. It wasn't coming through on Discord. 
Can you get a bit closer to your mic, Roto? Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I gotta, I gotta work on that. Is this any better? Yeah. I gotta get an actual mic. Yeah, I saw a bit of QE show. Brian did really well. He's much more patient than I am. It's hard to keep it cool sometimes, dealing with people. Except for Righteous, he's he's pretty cool. Well, Wits just continually did the whole cool -headed. Hillary Clinton shtick, you know, project your dig digressions onto your opponent constantly. <laughs> See, Nathan, I mean, this is what, uh, it's a personality thing. And this is kind of where I was, I'm just poking around at the nature of the show, the types of people that it draws, and the spectrum of personalities that come with it. And, and it's like Bev, for example, right? I mean, it's not that. I mean, these aren't people that don't understand how to put reasonings together, right? But obviously, like with Bev, just as an individual example, he did not understand. He did not put the pieces together. And it was obvious when he started unfolding what he thought about navigation, celestial navigation, and what ground positioning is. It's it's kind of odd that people step up to parry with you and they don't understand this side of the of the argument right or i say this side of the argument the truth <laughs> they he didn't get the concept it would have been different if he were equipped with this side's concept or this side's information right but he didn't he didn't have that i find that odd and so what Righteous was asking earlier about people coming here and, um, I guess, getting it, how do we get people to get it? That, that's, a, that's an odd thing. And it's really, if everybody's kind of evolving into understanding what's, what's happened, how we got here, how misinformation has been spread so worldwide, as far as we know, you know, I mean, everybody's kind of got to come out of the hole in stages of knowledge. That's acceptable, right? I mean, we can't necessarily batter or bash people because they don't understand things. But on the flip side, there's these, there's this contra attitude towards the whole thing. And it's just, it's, it's that type of personality that is not truly uh genuinely interesting interested in um uh, looking at even information it's the, their minds made up ahead of time and it's a different mission and it just seems like the the mission with some of these personalities is just so this information doesn't get anywhere this side's information right it's just to to be contrary, you know, period. And it's that type of personality that uh, it doesn't matter what you present. It doesn't matter if it's groundbreaking uh, aha moments for any other listener. These people won't let go of what they're bringing to the table. And it's frustrating because it is a bottomless pit. And as far as the nature of the show, it makes me wonder the direction and you know i know i'm assuming that's still all kind of being culminated as we go you know but nevertheless i mean seems like the more information that comes in like the type types of people the things are going to start getting assigned left behind prioritized in different ways the types of people the nature of the information, the organization of the show, stuff like that. Yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, where the show goes is dictated by the people who join it, though, isn't it? 
Like, well, Nathan, what do you think about a guy like maybe not necessarily Bev, but oh I know you know what you're talking about with just a contrary personality that no matter what you say, they'll just take the opposite. They've got something to say about everything you've got to say. Now, I mean, it's a little bit different. Let's just say, let's say you have a, a high school uh, teacher and he's just been taught what he's been taught. He's passing on the information that he was taught and he's never thought to even question the information that he's been given. So he's just going along, passing things along. And he, he doesn't have, he's not a contrarian to any other information. He just is ignorant that there is other information. So let's just say a guy like that comes on the show. He's not, you know, he may stick to his guns and tell you what he knows. He, if, if we're talking about the horizon, he'll say, yeah, here's the information on that. And he'll say what he knows. But that doesn't make him necessarily contrary, right? I mean, that type of guest, I guess. Now, we know somebody like Neil deGrasse Tyson knows better. I hope he knows better. I mean, I hope he's truly just a liar. But some people know better. Some people know both sides, and they're in on, you know, that level of truth that there is a lie at play. And that's a special type of type of person, but a high school teacher or a college professor, somebody that has absolutely studied the globe information, they have answers for the layman, like what happens at the horizons? Well, ships go over it. Everyone knows that, right? The earth spins, blah, blah, blah. I'll tell you about the axis and all that stuff, right? In detail because he teaches it, but that type of personality is not necessarily you know, anti what's been talked about here might bend an ear to it. Anyway, I mean, the debate to a person like that, who's, who's got globe information and how this show can take that and then counter it with actuality. Let's just say, let's say Bev was a high school teacher and he was really, but if he had never heard that stars represent a ground position you know if i'm those ears and i'm hearing that for the first time and my thought process was this whole time that it had nothing to do with a ground position that's an aha moment for me and i guess that's what i was trying to uh ask you about nathan the other day is the type of information in other words like what would you want to hear if you came to this show? You're curious about this info. You stumble across the show. What, what would you, what are those? Oh, that's interesting information. Or I never looked at it that way. You know, All just enough of have, a hook for somebody to. Everything we get. So sorry, you know, go ahead. when we listen to Brian and so forth, the people who actually do the research, not me, I'm lazy. But that, that's what I like. <laughs> can i say something no we um when you find this show you stay so everything that's being discussed on the show that's what you want to hear that's when you're like ah this is the place to be that's how it was for me and everybody else that comes in it's the same thing they come here and the information that's coming out of here keeps them here that's why I was so against the whole thing with Jaren and lining up with him and equipping him. No, you're equipped. FED's equipped. FED's going forward because we don't talk about nonsense unless you can validate it. We don't want to hear about it. I'm sorry, what's it? Don't want to hear about Mickelson Morley. Can't be validated. It's a parlor trick. Here, I said it. You could talk about it on your show, but when you come here, it's going to get hammered. By the way, I'm home in Alabama, so I don't know if my reception is good. You sounded good. 
Hey, Neil, you come to the family looking for a favor? No, 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 stick to what you do. Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Only Marlon, only Marlon Brando could do that. I'm too far south to pull off that accent. Only Marlon Brando could do that. <laughs> yeah, Neil, what you're talking about, man, is is true. People do come to the show. Uh, for the most part, I guess the type of people that would that would know about Jaron knows about Nathan, and they're kind of in the loop already. I keep thinking about the old retired. Yeah, but that was Hold on a second, but that was the route Merchant I took. Marine. I was just gonna sorry, that was the route I took. I was just gonna tell Goldbusters, Jaron, and I heard Dave Weiss say something about flatter debate. Nathan Oakley, those guys across the pond. <laughs> this is exact words. I can't get enough of them. So I was like, wow, what is this? And then when I when I found it, I mean, I sat out the window. I started to hear things like, you know, that science and the scientific method so I, that's what kept me here you you might be the perfect slice of example uh how did you how did you come about this info i mean what neil specifically what turned your head to even consider that this is valuable information what did it for you, Neil? What do you mean? How did I come to Flat Earth? No, how would you come to Flat Earth debate? Yeah, you know, I just flat. I just told you I came to Flat Earth debate through David Weiss mentioning it, and then me checking it out, and like never heard it like that before. I never heard like every time. Yeah, there was there was arguments, and you knew your Earth was flat, but people were going to debate like the ball has had the upper hand. And it just didn't seem that way when I came here. It's like, even though you don't but think Neil, you had the upper hand, but Neil, you had the upper hand here. But, but what got you to open the David Weiss door to begin with? Oh, I came into work one day and I, I was like, just uh, giving glory to God. I had a earth's um, spinning, but I don't feel it. And just, you know, glorying about that. My brother turned to me, he goes, why, you think the earth is a ball? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, Earth is flat. Where have you been? And I was like, what do you mean Earth is flat? Are you out of your mind? And uh, she started telling me about flat Earth. Uh, and I started, I went, I, I so berated him for now. about two to three weeks. I, I went after him for two to three weeks just trying to prove Earth was a sphere. And I, I, I couldn't do it. But how did you hand up to Dave Wise? Wasn't that the question? I think it was here. Well, like I said, my brother told me about flat earths, and I started looking into it. And everything was available. Then I found Mark Sargent. I found um, Wallbusters. I found Jaronism. I found I think for, D Marble. I think for me, one of the pivotal channels that like uh, got me into all the other epi channels was Globusters because they used to uh, constantly you know look at other people's content yeah. and promote it right oh, look at this guy did and look what that guy did and i'm like oh yeah, it was subscribe, I subscribe. Me too. yeah and i subscribed to a ton of them and <laughs> that's how i got most of the fe channels was through them but then once i kind of came here once i found out about this place and it was it was because i watched that one debate between like these three university students and uh allegedly dave iru and two other guys from our side and i had debate in the title and because of that, and because I had FV already in my algorithm, once debate got mingled in there, Nathan came up. And then once Nathan came up, I decided to give to him a listen after I came, like, let's say after the gym, after a while I came home. I would just lie down, put something in the background, and I would just listen to Nathan. Wait, wait, how did it come in? To the algorithm, or you found out about Slider Debate and it, you searched it? It was no, it was algorithm. I already, I already watched I didn't the get debate that. show. I already watched the debate show. It was between allegedly Dave, Iru, uh, two other guys from our side against these university students, three university students, right? And I had debate in the title, and because oh, I had debate in the okay. title, 
they entered my algorithm. And as I entered my algorithm, it makes debate with FE and it gave me Nathan. And then once I came to Nathan, I just kind of, I just kind of stuck with that. I like that. And I kind of overtook all the other channels. So I didn't watch any other channel after that pretty much. But if I did, it was just. The channel is growing. Yeah, I had, the, I, had the, I had, I had everything set. I had my time is set for when the show came on. There was two shows a day when I came in. And I had my time is set for the Young Cotton after show. Uh, I, I, everything was set up perfect. I think I would. Huh, I'm trying to think. Did I watch the live shows back then? Because I remember I'd fall behind sometimes, like two weeks, right? So I just won't be watching the the backlog, no. right? Once I found it, I never, I never, I missed every show. I would have the timer. I would have my alarm set for every show that started, and I knew when the cut after show was coming. But like I say, I think there was two shows a day at that time, if I remember correctly. Well, good one thing that was nice about the good morning. Just one quick thing. Good morning, Andrew Tiros. Um, one thing I liked about the Nathan Hola. show is you didn't have to watch; you could just listen. So you could play like a video game and just put it in the background, right? Yeah, it could or work. you could, or you could put it. You can just lie down to go to sleep or just get comfortable and put it in the background. So it was like, uh, it was nice that you didn't have to watch. <laughs> I thought that was a really interesting yeah, aspect because that, cause, that cause worked for me. Because then that way you weren't glued to the screen, right? You could like move around, do other stuff. Exactly. I was yeah. a contractor, so I had to work. So I could right. put it on and I hey, could so, work and hey, hear so. everything. Go ahead, D. Hey Neil. Hey Neil, when you said it was two shows back when you used to listen, was it two live shows? Or was it like it always was? That's what I have that's what I had to get clarified from D D the diversion because when I first started listening to you guys, I used to think that there were two live shows. So I used to come on and and um and I see the chat, but it was a premiere. I didn't at the time know how to dis, you know distinguish the two so i used to think like okay why is the discord empty and then dd broke it down to me but back in the day was it used to be two live shows for you uh, nathan nathan how did it go back then was it two live there was two live shows right yeah i was just figuring out which was the best time right and then when um was there any weekend shows there was never weekends right Mm, there was occasionally weekend shows. Nathan used to go two four seven at one point. He never had weekends off one time. It was kind of a relief when he started taking weekends off because I I didn't have that much more to catch up with. <laughs> it was a little bit of a break. But yeah, he used to go two four seven. He used to have no days off. <laughs> Don't you remember that, Nathan? No. Hey, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan don't remember the show from yesterday. Come on, you say Nathan. That's true. I don't remember talking the show about from yesterday. yesterday. Yesterday's show, and he's like, uh, "Remind me, what do we talk about?" Well, Roto was saying, <laughs> "You know, how do I feel about Bev?" Uh, and it's like, I don't give it a second thought, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, that's the thing, though. But they give you a second God, thought yeah. and a third no. thought. Well, see, now this is what I think about: is the people that come here. The show's growing. People come here and they stay. and Or they want to know more, so they stay. So what you're getting is some, some stickiness. So that's good. So something, something is attractive and it's holding attention. So let me ask. I got a question for you, Nathan. Uh, let's say that I accumulate data and my job is statistics and I've got so much data, right? That I have plot points that I can graph data. I've got so much data that I can statistically predict certain things. I can introduce uh, variables. I can wiggle this statistics by making something happen and I can have an effect on people by something I do. It'll only be done on earth and I can experiment 
with it, but it's data. Now, people come here and they hear things. Well, what makes them stick around are maybe some of the ways that this show does disseminate one thing from another. So what's the what's your view when I approach and say something like it is on earth, it is an experiment, it is it does have variables, you can wiggle it, right? It's data, I can predict it, I can null it. What do we say to that? Well, you tell me, what's the first step of the the method? Well, see, I mean, and this is why I already know what you're going to say, and you probably know what I'm going to say. This is more about why people come here. Because, I mean, we know that's an interesting thing I might bring up. It's the type of thing Jaron m- may bring to the table. Nothing against Jaron. Jaron's a good guy, right? Whatever. We're all trying what? to get somewhere. Get out, we, all, we all have different motives. However, some people may think data, statistics, variables it's on earth is science is it science no why do we start classifying things right we start separating it's like this is science this isn't you didn't answer nathan's first question okay well nathan's correct absolutely but the reason he's asking that is because he's he's about to classify what i brought to him into its proper place, which is the right thing to do, which is, which is why I think people stick around with this show because other shows, other channels, other people trying to get information out don't classify like that. That's what makes this show valuable. It makes it a very tightly twined rope and it's useful. So wasn't an actual, it was a dummy question, (laughs) you know, yeah, but look at the look at the housekeeping questions alone. That's why I was so against when people would say, "Oh, you got to get rid of the housekeeping questions." What? That's the foundation. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I mean, if you can show me which statistic you wiggle to get me a Lamborghini, then you know I'll be all ears. <laughs> Why did you laugh? I'm yeah. So Nathan, yeah. I'm, um, I'm well, you know, some people, some people can, they can bring that type of argument to the table. Right. And I think a lot of the population would say, yeah, data is science. What if I had this, what if I accumulated data for a decade and my buddy did as well. And we're in the lab and we, you know, all of a sudden, we go to, let's say, our government with this information, and the data is about behavior of people. And we tell the government, hey, if you do that, then you can expect people to do this. Yeah. And lo and behold, they sure do. Hey, we wiggled this thing over here, and the people started going over here and doing this behavior. They sure did, because we made them do that. They chose, but they did it. Now, some people might call that science. And then when you start getting into things like, Peer review, well, do you high-five your information with my information? Well, yes, I do high-five. That's Is that science? Is peer review science? No. Is the collaboration of intelligent minds science? No. Right? So what is science? So, I mean, Physical then we start classifying. Well, it's, it's classified because that's what it's doing. So the method exclusively deals with natural phenomena and the cause thereof. Its purpose is to elucidate the cause of natural phenomena. That's science. So when you talk about science. if you talk about manipulation of statistical data to change behavioral patterns, then you're talking about psychology and statistics. Now, while after the fact, once you've instigated whatever you're going to instigate, you can then do an analysis and show the correlation between what you manipulated, as you put it, wiggled, right, and the outcome that you got. And you can give it statistics to show how well what you did correlated with what your presumed outcome would be. But we're talking about pissing in the wind versus 
absolute stone-cold empiricism. There's a massive, massive difference between the two. Same with medicine. Adam's always disclaiming this. They do group studies and offer correlative information to base their results on or to base your decisions on. Well, their correlations might very well be very well analysed and presented. But they are just that, correlations, as opposed to stone-cold, empirically validated cause and effect relationships. That's the difference. The only reason you'd want to call statistics science is because you have been trained and I have been trained and everybody listening has been trained that science proves. At an early enough age for you to forget, but at a young enough age for it to be embedded in your brain that it's proving things. Therefore, when you say, well, my statistical analysis with a correlative study will show that if you apply X, Y will happen to a tune of a 58.7% statistical certitude. Marvellous. Better than 50% chance of it hap actually happening if I apply it. Okay, that's fascinating, <laughs> you know, but that's all it is. However, if you rephrase that to, if I wiggle X, Y will happen, science sunshine, People go, ooh, really? <laughs> I'll have five. Sell me, sell me. Because they're convinced. That's the only reason to call it science. There's no other reason. If it isn't. Anyway, I'm going to press buttons. Back in a minute. See, that's perfect. Now, let's say this. A guy, average Joe, has information like this, okay? And here's what I want to uh, shed light on or to look at within the framework of the question I'm about to pose. A guy, average Joe, says, the moon is a rock with a core that has a gravity that pulls the globe's curved water tides. Okay? Now, how many steps did that person jump in assumptions by saying those things? How many things are assumed with that one bit of, uh, well, what they would consider a fact? Quite right? a few. Okay? That... The moon's a rock. The moon's a has a core. The moon well, has just gravity. The same list. It's it's pretty much all of it. <laughs> exactly. But when those guys come up, just if if talking about grab, if what gravity of the moon would do for on water, then. It's 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 catering to steps of Fanta when you know there are several steps before that that are assumed to even talk about the steps at hand, like pulling water, you know, because first, what is the moon, for example? Is it physical? Is that proven? Is it round? Does it have a core? Does it have gravity? It, you know, then how do we know, even if it did have all that, that it would affect water? Would it affect it consistently? Every, every night, every morning, every season change? Would it raise and lower sea level? You know, I mean, what would it do? We'd have to assume all that. We'd have to show all these steps happening. To get to the and then does you know just to say that and then we're do we're in orbit too no, no. and you then everything do any of those steps. just just to clarify right and it's based on yes. the, the same response I gave you to you know is this science or isn't this science so mm -hmm. you're, you're trying to establish whether or not you can figure out whether or not something will have an effect on the tides but that assertion comes mm -hmm. from the concept formerly known as a I think they called it a they call it the original gravity. They didn't call it science. They called it law. That's right. 
Right, so the original law of gravity, which has now been superseded by Einsteinian fourth dimensional space time, would assert that mass attracts mass. So step one, observe natural phenomena, right? So what's mm -hmm. happening? Before you start saying, well, what would happen to the tides based on the moon being a rock that will what? Have its mass attract the mass of the water? That's mass attracting mass. A claim to be phenomena. So straight into step one. Okay, what's the first step? Observe natural phenomena. Mm. Mm. See? And that's that's what makes that's what makes the North Star do what it does, right? It's gonna pull that needle. And because the average Joe was walking around laden with misinformation step after step after step. They have truly stepped up leaps of logic, right, to where all that is sewn together into a misinformation quilt, and it's shared and taught that way, to disassemble all those steps and break it back down to the foundation. Here's where we start, and this is how this, was, this erroneous structure was built that you were taught. It's a hard, it's jagged pill to swallow for a lot of people, but nevertheless, breaking it down to the bare skin first is, in my opinion, what this channel attempts to do to the veteran ears or to a newbie, you know, to, because I think that's, that's a pivotal, uh, it's where the crossroads is. And I think that's where people start leaning into well i can understand that i can understand the the uh classification of natural science i think it's a good gateway to get people understanding um the fundamentals like observation and i you know getting that getting that concept that a whole lot of what people think is a mental image Versus like breaking it down to something. So prove it to yourself. Have you proven it to yourself yet? You know, I think is kind well, of well, uh, well, well, well. what people well, get well, well. Again, you're, you're getting ahead of yourself, right? So you say prove it to yourself. The, again, if you're talking about stuff that's occurring in nature, so let's focus on the, the one we've already brought up, which is gravity. Step one, I'm going to say it again, because I'm going to make you focus on one particular word, right? observation of natural phenomena right you're way ahead of yourself when you're like well these people haven't proven it to themselves that what that the moon's going to pull tides way 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 ahead of where you need to be just focus on that first step the importance of the first step has probably been undersold by us and maybe that's what the focus of today's show is going to be right step one observe natural phenomena why is that so important this doesn't seem like a big deal well, because it's not a phenomena mm. until you actually see it happening. Mm. You've got to see it occurring in nature. So once you've seen it happening, you can ask, mm. why did that happen? Now, in the case of gravity, no one's ever seeing what they say occur, occur. It doesn't occur. That's why you're never going to see it occur, to ask yourself what the, what was it, the next step that you were like, what, how does this get proven? What get proven? Step one, let's see it first. That's why normally we can hold people to task mm -hmm. on gravity by just mm -hmm. asking them to show it us. Show it us. So isn't that why they changed time. it to a bending of a space-time? Because they, they couldn't show, show me bend for the space-time. You're not hey, going to have Nathan. a good job. You're not going to have a hey, good hey, time. Nathan, in other words, in other words if we, until we see clouds coming down and we see helium balloons staying on the ground, until those two things happen, there's no such thing as gravity doing anything no. because there's no downward so Let's put it another way. Period. Imagine a world without fog. Okay, there is no fog. It never happens. It doesn't exist. We never experience of the limited visibility because of a low-lying cloud layer. Yeah. Likewise, you never go up to a, a, a mountain and find that it's just high enough to be in the clouds. That, does, that is a, it's a scenario that does not exist in our world. You with me? That doesn't happen. Okay. It's akin to, in a world where that does not happen, 
asking why it happens. So if you say, well, why do we on some days have very limited visibility for no reason whatsoever? Yeah, I mean, I shouldn't have used something real. I should have just made it up. Why is it that some days we wake up and everything's orange? Well, can we, can we explain that, please? I mean, let's get to proving why that happens. Uh, it doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, so first you've got to see it happen. So if we woke up and every so often everything was orange, you could start asking yourself why that happened. But if you wake up and mass isn't attracting mass in any circumstances, why would you be asking why that happened? So step one, it's not a phenomena until you observe it happening in nature. So if you don't see it happening, you don't need to start asking what would happen if it was pulling the moon's tides or the Earth's tides with the moon. You don't ask those questions if the claimed phenomena doesn't happen at all. If you never see it occurring, their explanation for why the moon does it is irrelevant, isn't it? So you didn't answer my question. Is that why it changed it to bending of space-time? Uh, I would suspect that the fact that you can't observe mass to attract mass would be a bit of a problem. The fact that you can debunk it by just looking at gas behaviour, also a bit of a problem. So, potentially, Neil, we don't know why Einstein has punted a brand new conceptual medium bending and then had all grades below college being taught that it's a mass attracting mass force, only to be told otherwise when you get to higher education. Now, that has been the case for the last 100 plus years. Why? Well, because they need a force to hold you onto a ball spinning through a sky vacuum at a horrendous speed. You've got to have that force, otherwise we'd all fly off. So they can't just relinquish it. But ultimately, describing it as a non-force that you can think of as a force, but is actually a bent fourth dimensional space-time, and the geodesics of that bent space-time, i.e. the mass attracting mass is no longer the cause, but the uneven distribution of mass is the cause, and the effect is no longer a force holding you to the ground, it's the warping and bending of space-time. Now that warping and bending of space-time can be thought of as the force of gravity, as Newton described it, although he didn't, he was hijacked. But this convoluted gaggle screw of nonsense is all to just apologise for why the globe isn't throwing you off. That's all it is. Good morning. Good morning, Ted. Let me just say one thing real quick. My, my nephew just, you know, he's in college now, and he's taking a course called Physical Science. And in this class, they demonstrated, they dropped a knife and a dime at the same time, and they both hit the floor at the same time, and they told them it's because there's a pull to the center of the Earth. So I thought they're teaching bending space-time in college, but yet they taught him, they're teaching him that there's a, a force pulling to the center of the Earth called gravity. Maybe it's on a low-level college course. Who's, who's on yeah, it actually is. It, it says it's the class he, he told me, the teacher said it's going back to when you were a child, the wonderment of a child. So you're not going to learn no equations or anything like that. It's just, why is the sky blue? They try to take you back to when you were a child and the things that um, you wondered about. Now, why would they do that to us? Re-indoctrination. Refresh a course on the Exactly. Nathan, today's video, which was yesterday's video, uh, is going to answer all of these questions. Oh, okay. It is that good of a video because when they have a model and any part of that model is wrong, the whole thing comes tumbling down. Okay, so we've got Beyond the Big Bang, Bjorn Ekken Ekberg. I can never say his name yesterday either. Um, I'll, stick a, <laughs> I'll stick a link to him in the um, chat. Yeah, Maybe just queue it up for the live show. Has the, has the video made it into your subscription feeds? Because there's literally nobody in the chat. That's pretty weird. Usually somebody there. Man, they really cobble us, don't they? The show's about to go live and there's literally no one there. It all seems all right. I've just checked. It's connected. It's let ready. It's queued. Let me, let me open up. Let me open up my phone and see if you show up. 
Okay, subscription. Scrolling. Oh. Five minutes if there is a problem. Yeah, nothing. Um, I scrolled by Arwen. But you're not showing up. It's showing the hurricane. Public, monetized, yeah. It's actually showing my studio that there's five people waiting, so. Yeah, it'll, it'll come out when you start it, I guess. getting out to somebody, at least. Thank God for I've got such a decent community. I think for me, once you start the show, then it shows up. Oh, here it is. I just saw it. Oh, good. Yeah, it's there. Upcoming. Happy days. Yeah, I mean, it just popped up <laughs> while I was scrolling. Oh, well, at least it's there. Yeah. You're sandwiched in between Hurricane Idala. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be covering this today. Okay. Oh, it's going to be one of the top five ever. It is, it is, it is one of their own telling you how the model crumbles. How's that? Oh, right. Excellent. We like those. Oh, lovely. Just lovely. Rajesh, are you there? Yeah. What did you want to ask me yesterday? Sorry, I had a busy day. I just wanted to understand uh, some things about the sextant to make sure I got it right. But I can't do it today. I gotta, I'm got about to jet soon. Well, I, I would suggest just watch all the videos of what the sextant well, does. I just had like mainly like two questions and I was going to like share my screen and draw it and then you tell me if this is right or not and that's the just Well, let me ask you a question. That's fine. We'll do it your way eventually. But have how many videos have you watched on what the sexton is and what it could do <laughs> and what's it designed for? Uh I watched a bit of one, maybe two or three, something like okay. that. The, then we're not going to do it your way. You're going to do your own research and you're going to tell me what it is. How's that? Because that's the best uh, way to find that's the best way to find out, right? Just do your own well, research so that you own it. I've been listening to you guys for a while now and stop it. I Don't just, listen to me. Verify me. Right. Well, at first I want to hear what you say and then I can go further. Uh, all right. There. I'll tell you what I'm gonna say. Go watch those videos. Uh, I was kind of hoping for like the clip notes yeah, version. I'm surprised. I only get this stuff because I've been paying attention to what Tenth says. I mean, I was asked earlier, like, what, what, what do you want the show? Where do you want the show to go, and so on and so forth from Roto? I'm like, well, it, it naturally goes there because of people like Tenth Man and because of people like Brian and QE who do all the research. Now I'm vigilant and and keep the production schedule and upload schedule and live stream schedule consistent and make sure that the show runs nicely. But I don't do any research, do I? No. Right. So it, it, you just got to pay no. attention. All you got to do is pay attention. I know as much as 10th... I say that. That's probably... I hesitate to say that. I know almost as much as 10th man does because everything he knows is disseminated here consistently, repeatedly. Therefore, I can, you know, I can take on board what he said just by listening. Now, if you're a member of the audience and you're like, well, what? just give me the information so I can get it. It's like, well, I didn't get it the first time with anything. Literally, you name any subject that I cover and win with. And it's like, yeah, the first time I heard that, I didn't get it. Or the second, or the fifth, or the ninth. I was almost there. By the tenth time, I got it enough to probably fail in a debate with it. And then win the next time. So it's just like anything that you learn. I remember when my dad had a stroke, I had to explain to him about how his brain would start rewiring itself. Because half his brain's obviously no longer functional. So he's got to start getting the other half of his brain to do things that they didn't previously do. The, way, the analogy I gave to him was like creating a rope bridge. So you've got two mountains, if you will, to take it to an extreme, and you've got a great big valley in between. That represents your uh, process that you're going to do, in this case, debate about something. Well, the first time you do it is the equivalent of you metaphorically throwing one rope from one side of the valley to the other. Now, it hooks after about five attempts, and it seems precarious, but you're happy that you can get across while you dangle on one rope. Well, that's the first time you do something. It's difficult. There's a good chance that you might actually fall off the rope. Fail completely. Right. But when you do get to the other side, you've completed the task once, and bloody hell, that was hard. 
you've already got the rope in place. So you throw another grappling hook across the valley so that the next time you cross back again, there's two ropes. Now, you can imagine where this analogy is going as you throw ropes back and forth every time you do the process until you've got a bridge that you can walk across without even thinking about it. You put zero mental effort into it because it comes naturally. That is by doing said process repeatedly. Or in the case of learning a new process, having the dissemination of the process come to you multiple times is the way that you understand it better. Now, I've understood that for a long time. That I'm just slow on the uptake, if you want to call it that. I don't care. But eventually, just... so long as you get there, does it matter? The journey that it took. However, most people are bloody lazy. They don't want to spend the time and listen repeatedly to the same things. They say, oh, I've heard this. All right, well, did you take it forth and win in a debate with it? Probably not. So maybe listen to it a few more times. You just uh, described procedural memory. Once you learn how to ride the bike, it goes to long-term memory, and that's where you retrieve it from. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Good to have you all. Shout out immediately to James Mays, who says, good thumbs up day to you all. Support the show. Thank you very much, James. Really appreciate it. Straight off the bat. Nothing like opening up to a super chat. Any evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge that's a horizon formerly known as the curve of the Earth? Don't all go at once. Hello. <laughs> I'm waiting for someone else. I always do it most of the time. Hello, Armin. Hello. All right. Hello. No one's going to answer your question. So, no. no. Looks like we're going to move on. It's not geometric. Right, it's not going to be that day, is it? We did housekeeping almost in its entirety the last couple of days. So, I'm more than happy to move on straight onto the video, if I'm honest, <laughs> so, as we're all warmed up. And uh, sometimes housekeeping just does not go over. And this is one of those days. <laughs> So the video we're covering today is called Beyond the Big Bang by Bjorn Ek something or other that I can't pronounce. Someone else do that for me? E-K-E-B-E-R-G. Arwin? How do you say that? Ekberg. Ekberg. Ek Ekberg. Ekberg. Good enough. Okay, so um, I'm not going to give it an automatic like, but we've had a bit of a preamble from Tenth in the pre-show that this is going to take apart some of the aspects of heliocentric modelling when it comes to the Big Bang. So as always, over to you, Tenth. Do you want to give us a little bit of a reasoning behind your choice today? Yes. Um, it's a model you're going to find out. And when something's wrong with a the model, they have to put a building block on it to explain it. And then that becomes part of the model to explain the previous understanding of the model. And then they mosey on down the road and something else happens they can't explain. So they got to put something else. And it's just these building blocks of, that make up the model, not reality, eventually, if, if one of them is wrong, then all the rest that you made up to cover that first one all come tumbling down. The guy does a great job of showing the pseudoscience of it all. And yet he's on that side of the argument, but he sees it. I suspect this will remind me of Wakey Wakey's interview with that astrophysicist that did the same sort of thing about the crying aspects of the model that failed without, you know, oh, it's just, change the model and then he reveals that he's not actually on her side and suddenly it's a big deal because you know me decrying aspects of the failing model that is heliocentric to you a flat earther is devastating and i wouldn't have done it if i'd have known i thought you were on my side and would laugh about how failures just get changed but you didn't you're going to use it against me and point out the failures aren't you flat earther how disgraceful <laughs> anyway that was Wakey Wakey's interview with an astrophysicist some years ago, maybe five years ago now. It's quite some time ago. Anyway, this is the Institute of Art and Ideas. That's the name of the channel. There is a link going by in the live stream chat. So as is always the procedure with these things, go to the person's channel and let them know at Nathan Oakley 1980 sent me. Hopefully leave them a positive comment so that they know we've responded to their video, which is what we're going to do now. So let's get into it. Of saying there might be something wrong with our framework, the move of cosmologists was just framework <laughs> sounds familiar. <laughs> 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 
framework. So, is it a logical framework? There must be something else, because otherwise our theory would not be correct. Theory would not be correct. What? Using these science words already? Bloody hellfire. We're only about 30 seconds. No, 10 seconds in. Our theory would not be correct. Well, scientific theory is based on validated scientific experimentation that was based on a valid hypothesis based on an actual observed phenomena. That's where you get scientific theory from. So if you're talking about actual science, you're not going to find that suddenly your theory is completely wrong because your theory is going to be based on scientific validity. But no, that's not what they're doing here. They're just using these science words, aren't they? Like theory. So what I would like to do in the next 20 minutes or so... Oh, did I title the video? Beyond the Big Bang, by the way. This is the name of the actual title of the video. Is to show how it is, in fact, possible as a hypothesis. Here we go. More science words. Hypothesis. That would be the independent and dependent variable relationship based on the dependent variable being the naturally occurring phenomena that you want to find the cause of, and the independent variable being your presumed cause of that effect that you observed in nature, and the experiment that you would use to give you scientific validity to go on to give you a theory would be you varying that which you presume causes the effect that you observed in nature. What he will now go on to detail will absolutely unequivocally not be that. And what is that? That is science. He's just hijacking the words because every time he uses them, people nod and think he's proving things. That in advanced modern science as we know it, trying to follow the scientific method in good faith can be led into a kind of self-reinforcement of errors. And Really? You're telling me an empirical outcome for A causing B will lead, lead you into some sort of error? No, the actual scientific method, which he will not be applying, just the most outrageous theft of valour in this ridiculous nonsense that will not have any scientific methodology applied to it whatsoever. But he starts off by prefacing his bloody routine, which is all it is, by saying he's got stuff that's what, vaguely hinted at being an adherence to the scientific method by talking about it? This is an outrage, 10th. You've already got my blood boiling. Hey, listen, and gets listen, 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 listen. The, the, key was, the first key was, so, was earlier on, but the second key was trying to follow the scientific method. So right. it means they didn't. <laughs> the general question that interests me, uh, why I waded into this topic, is what happens at the very limit of knowledge, where physics and metaphysics intersect? Uh, what? Physics would be the study of the physical and natural world. That's natural science. I've just detailed it as a cause and effect relationship elucidation by way of systematic experimentation based on valid hypothesis based on natural phenomena. That's physics. Where, where, where physics, the study of the physical and natural world, meet, meets metaphysics? Ugh. You mean where your stolen valour meets your bullshit? That's what that loosely translates to. Uh, cosmology is situated right here. Uh, it is right where science on the one hand and religion or myth if you will on the other bleed into each other inevitably uh no empiricism and empirical outcomes based on scientific methodology do not bleed into religion and as i will try to show in the following an excessive belief in the scientific method itself there's no belief in an empirical methodology it's a method you just have to adhere to I it if you want the empiricism there's no belief it's in a category error what, you don't believe in the scientific method, Nathan? It's a method. It's nothing to believe in. It's just yeah. a method. What? But that doesn't mean you can't believe in it. Not a, I believe it's in the not scientific belief, method. It's application, not belief. Whether or not you apply yeah. it, not believe in it. I can believe in yeah, it all day I'm... long. Will it validate anything? No. The yeah. application of the method. No, I believe in the application of the scientific <laughs> method, Nathan. Just piss off. <laughs> Get a last <laughs> Darwin. <laughs> can also lead to a kind of zealotry in its own right. Just a few words about how I came to this. Zealotry? As opposed to advancing humanity. Every single bit of the technology he's using has been based on scientific validation. Yet he's decrying it as providing you with a zealot's outcome. No. Empirical methodology does not induce zealotry. Somewhat unusual perspective. Uh, so in my long academic journey, this is projection. What they are is zealots. Why well, didn't I spot that immediately? Pure projection. And most of it did in Canada. I was blessed and cursed, you could say, by doing all my doctoral research and postdoctoral research 
across disciplines, not inside of any particular one, not inside of philosophy or science studies as so. I was investigating the role of metaphysics in the formation of modern science. You were doing an investigation into science, which is a very narrow method. Oh, I can't believe this. This guy's just a quack. But I also followed uh, what's known as Science in Action, inspired by the work of uh, French anthropologist Bruno Latour and many others, trying to understand how science moves and works as well. That'd be a short book if I wrote it. Title, Science in Action. First page. You've got to wiggle it. Lots of blank pages following. That's it. That's the action. You wiggle it. You, you vary <laughs> an independent variable. That's the action of science. If you want to follow the methodology, you've assumed that something you vary will cause an effect you've observed. And then you just vary it. That's it. That's the action. The action is the variation of an independent variable presumed cause of an effect you're studying. That's it. That's the action of science. So the traditional perspective in philosophy of science is... In the philosophy of science? No, 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 no. no. While philosophers may have come up with the empirical methodology, that doesn't make philosophy science. Science itself, natural science, what we deal with here and what you'll bullshit about in terms of what the sky is, is the study of the physical and natural world and the methodology used to elucidate the cause of naturally occurring phenomena. That's not philosophy. Uh, that science is about realism versus idealism. No, it isn't. It's about elucidating the cause of a naturally occurring effect. Different ways of approaching truth. No, nope. there's one way of approaching it. It's a set in stone method. But really, science is about doing. It's about producing acceptable research. It's no, it isn't. It's about varying and manipulating a presumed cause and effect to see if it causes it or not. It's about convincing other scientists. It's no, it isn't. It's about showing them your empirical outcome if you have one. It's about winning funding to do research and so Yeah, that's what it is for you. Yeah? Bleeding the public dry so that you can bullshit them about what you say the night sky is. That's all this is. Because you're not following any methodology. If you were, you'd be laying out the methodology and showing us how it provided empirical outcome, like I can do with the scientific methodology that you're hijacking the valor of. So on. So science, as I was trying to map out how cosmology and physics work, it's not simply about truth seeking. It's a production of knowledge. Uh, it's an oh, is it? So you're, you're, you're producing on a production line knowledge. No, no, scientific knowledge would be empirical in nature. You know, I, the outcome can only be one of two things. Either the thing I described earlier, the action of science, the wiggling your independent variable, either causes the effect that you wanted to induce because you were studying that effect and asking why it happened, or it doesn't. There's only two outcomes. That's it. It's really narrow. A roll on the bullshit from this man. It's an industry. And I was trying to map this out across theoretical landscapes, not in any one individual. Another science word. Theoretical. Almost sounds like it's based on scientific exploration that's got cause and effect reasoning validated through experimentation that kind of theoretical it isn't silo but as you may know in academia everything is governed by specialization uh, and the greater the specialization the greater the potential blind spot i had a phd supervisor who used to argue that every discipline inevitably loses sight of its foundational problem over time really you see, if you've, got, if you've got a problem, which is, I want to know why that happened, all you do is vary things until it happens. There's no losing sight of it. There's just no causing it if you don't know what caused it. In other words, you constantly and consistently validate your null hypothesis. Validate the zero difference prediction result. That is to say, you vary something and it doesn't induce the outcome you were trying to induce. Now, bearing in mind that that's the purpose of the experiment, to induce the effect you're studying... Losing sight. Oh, I, I kind of forgot what phenomena I was even trying to induce for a second there. Why does anybody give these people money? Time. So he used to say, uh, if you want to understand politics, do not... Politics? That sounds like the physical and natural world dealt with by physics and science. That would be politics. Study political science. Oh, I see. Another hijacking of the word science. Political science. What an oxymoron. If you want to understand the economy, do not... That would be the economy. What we got now, we're going to have economic science. Study economics and so on. So just economics? 
So you didn't even War hijack Thunder, it in the way that I was intending to, because why bother, game has... right? Why bother hijacking it when you can just say science about 50 times and then talk about it? So I used to wonder, if you want to understand the cosmos, should you study cosmology? No, because it's a pseudoscience. Obviously, there's no particular career path for this kind of perspective. Uh... And why don't you just answer the question? I would say no, because looking and declaring and then seeking funding and trying to convince other quote unquote scientists is what you'll actually do in that field. Now, if you just apply the scientific method, which requires almost no funding, then that's what you do. If you want to be a scientist and you want to study the quote unquote cosmos, then you observe natural phenomena and presume a cause of the effect you've observed and see if you can induce it or not. That's it. If you don't, the thing that you varied and didn't induce the effect with is a proven null hypothesis. Zero difference result. Now, you can do that indefinitely. Alternatively, you can join what you call cosmology science and bullshit about what you say the sky is based on consensus, peer review, the action of science, all sorts of other buzzwords like hypothesis, which you've used, theory, which you've used, science, which you've used repeatedly. But there isn't any. There is no science in anything this man will present on stage whatsoever. There will be no independent and dependent variable hypothesis construction with zero difference result. Null. There won't be that. There won't be an experimentation with a variation of a presumed cause to try and induce the effect. There won't be any validation of the effect being induced by a variation of a presumed cause that's then been validated to go on to form theories. But he will bullshit you, the audience, about every single one of those things and imply that he's got them because they're all very clever science words that make you think he's proven all this crap that he's talking about. He hasn't. He hasn't proven a damn thing. But he'll be asking for funding. Uh... On that note, smash the super chat if you want to support this channel. 85 people. No, 90 people watching. Please share the show. With like across the human and natural sciences, but this is how uh, I came at this. All right, tenth, gotta take it back. We're three minutes into this video, and so far all he's done is get my blood boiling because he keeps stealing valor. He's done nothing to hijack, uh, not hijack, undermine the Big Bang cosmology. Three minutes in, is it literally just the first three, maybe even four minutes? Is just going to be building up the audience by stealing as much possible valor as that can be stolen from science and the scientific method. To then launch into his bullshit. Is that what's happening? Actually, you're going to be surprised by the end. <laughs> not really. I mean, I've got to be honest. That's no, okay. I'm not so we'll good. See. We'll see. We'll see. You owe me no, one when you, when you get surprised. Okay. And so, just from the outset, as I'm sure many of you know, cosmology is very different from other sciences. And it isn't science, it's pseudoscience. In a very fundamental way. Uh, the scope of the subject matter covers the largest extent imaginable, literally, and it does so based only on our own local place within it. So unlike physics in the, in the micro scale, physics, yeah, dealing with the physical, we cannot do repeated experiments under controlled conditions. We're so, because it's not physics, it's not science. Physics is science, right? Other quote unquote sciences like biology do come under physics. They're just dealing with the physical. Now, the physical of men and what happens when what we call medicine is applied is still physics. If you're following the scientific method, now you can talk about group studies. Adam's here if he wants to go into that. But that is not science, right? What did he just admit to? Not having science. Thank you. We're looking for patterns in the sky and single observations. Correlative studies then. Definitely not cause and effect relationships. Definitely not controlled experiments, as he just detailed, that they definitely don't have. He's correct. Or turn around in 20 seconds. Uh, just the scope of the macrophysical universe as we know it is... It you don't know it. You've assumed it with scaling values from Kepler. At least 20 to 30 orders of magnitude high. Based on Kepler? You have no idea what order of magnitude anything is about based on how much volume you've got of the sky. So you're telling us how colossal the amount of stuff that you're dealing with is. You don't know how big the deal you're dealing with. You're only basing it on Kepler's scaling value assumptions for these sizes to give us these orders of magnitude. Higher than the lowest scale of theoretical physics at the micro level. So this means there's practically no accessible part of the universe where we can... Uh, where's that juxtaposition? 
theoretical physics at the macro level, did he say, or micro level? Uh, well, that's not physics, is it? You're talking about bullshitters in mathematics. Well, who? Do, how does that directly relate to the physical reality with that one ham-handed segue? It doesn't for anybody who's paying attention. Now, for the rest of the audience who've just listened to him bark out a few science words for three straight minutes, they're going to be utterly convinced that whatever he says from this point forward is valid and true. You can do manipulations, or and the timescales involved are also millions of times longer than any human life. So I'll... Says you, based on Kepler scaling. Again, the audience is just going to nod because he's talked about science and used a few science words. So nod, nod, nod. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Longer than our life. How do you know? You don't. All of this obvious limitations and it's possible to question already here based on this how cosmology could be a science at all i mean you could turn this around and say it's quite impressive that we can do anything at all and make any kinds of predictions from the extremely limited region of space that we're in that so prediction in scientific terminology is called a hypothesis it predicts the cause of an effect so it's a suppositional statement that is yet to be validated that contains the antithesis of the prediction. That's a lot of words. What does that mean? It means that you see something happening and you go, I think this causes it. That's called an alternative hypothesis. I think this causes that. That, as a statement, is an alternative hypothesis. A scientific prediction, as he's just used that word. It contains the antithesis of that prediction. That's called a zero-difference result prediction also known as a null or null outcome no outcome zero difference the null outcome is the opposite of what you state if you think a causes b in your alternative or this causes that as i phrased it earlier then your null prediction is this doesn't cause that so that when you go forth and experiment that's the actualization of your scientific prediction you vary this and see if that happens and if that doesn't happen, you validate, that's prove, your zero difference result. Your prediction that A, or this, wouldn't cause that. Well, that's proven true when it doesn't cause it. That's a scientific prediction. Again, a little bit more stolen valor when he talks about predictions. Because he's going to base it on correlative studies, as he's just disclaimed. But then tell you that it's prediction based. No, it isn't. Total lie. That's visible. And how we can even measure it with some kind of confidence. Measure what? This massive scale that you got from Kepler? So just to consider the scale for a second. To measure distance in space... You don't. You get Kepler to give you scaling values. We use certain light phenomena in the sky that... No, you don't, because the light phenomena is going to have a speed of light attached based on Einsteinian conceptual mathematics we figure are quite precise no they're not i've just debunked them in two breaths and we use them to guide us guide you i thought they were measuring no it's how the words subtly change halfway through his description seconds earlier is a measurement now it's a guide i see so one minute i've got a tape measure with nice little notches on it measuring things the next minute i've just got a stick that's roughly a yard long for my meter measurement that i need to make oh it's just a guide now is it i see and so, in order to measure, uh, measure space, we need... Why did he stutter? You know, when we highlight the stutters of our opponents, that's why. I already highlighted why he stuttered. It's for the reasons I gave before he stuttered. We need a theory and confidence that this... Theory... Not a measurement if it's a guide, is it? Theory is universally applicable. So what it means is that cosmologists don't simply observe and measure distances. They don't measure anything. They interpret them in dependence on the model they use to calculate this distance. Boom! So you're not measuring jack. So there is, uh, this is something I've written about elsewhere, but there's a self-reinforcing... Why not say it like it is? So we're not measuring anything, we just bullshit about it, based on stuff that we've already assumed. Dynamic at work here, where actually the further out in the universe you go, the more model-dependent you become. Uh, no, no, again, you've got this juxtaposition between fantasizing about what your conceptual model will do and traveling traveling physically out into what you describe as the universe no no what you're doing conceptually and mathematically is traveling out into your model and describing mathematically what will happen in your model and then calling that the universe calling that cosmology calling that the world calling it physics it isn't 
So try to run these calculations with a Canadian physics professor. Calculations. There you go. He's disclaimed it himself. Still has to be honest. Sir, that I collaborate with, and we found that you know when you get very very far into the observable universe, you're not moving into the observable universe when you do your calculations and your model. Again, just misleading the audience. It's a bait and switch. It's a little switcheroo before your very eyes in the same breath. The difference between models can mean 25 to 50 percent difference in what the scale and the size is. With reality, so what if the model's off? It could mean up to 50 percent off in reality. Bollocks. How far, how far apart galaxies really are depends on the model you use. No, it does not. The model and its depiction of how far the galaxies are apart will be solely dependent on the model and what you're showing. And what happens in that model and what you're showing only exists in that model and what that model shows. It is absolutely devoid of any connection whatsoever to reality because it's not reality. This has got a very specific definition. It's a fallacy. It's called the fallacy of misplaced concreteness, otherwise known as a reification fallacy. To take that which is not concrete and infer that it is the physical reality you live in. The example given under the definition of a reification fallacy or the fallacy of misplaced concreteness is the map is not the terrain. Well, this model is not the world. It does not have any bearing on my physical reality. If it did, I'd be dealing with physics, not conceptual models. Now, this is rarely discussed because scientists have more or less agreed to just use only one model. So uh, we are left with, you know, remarkably precise numbers for distances. Really? So that's based on science agreeing? Because it's no longer a methodology that they don't adhere to. Science is now, by his language, become whether or not men agree. And in this instance, they agree on certain maths that is the world based on the model that they've all agreed on. So they've all agreed on the reification fallacy that they'll employ. No, this is definitely not science, but now it is linguistically. Shout out to Jardo, who says, I vote the 10th man gets the sack from presenting videos. We're all dying of boredom. All those who agree, type number. Then he doesn't give a number in the super chat. So we've got people going A, zero, pi, four, 66.7. Nobody knows what number to type. And nobody knows what the number they do type means, Jardo. So that fell on its ass, really. But there's 95 people watching, so I'm very grateful regardless and smash the super chat. More, oh, thank you for the support. I really appreciate it. I'm even going to give it a love heart. Thank you for the support. I don't find this boring. The fact that it's got my blood boiling, I would hope actually is enthused the audience into listening to Tenth Man's very valid point for playing this. The point is he's decrying aspects. Now, he's not decrying it so we can take it and go, look, here they are admitting it. He's decrying it in the same way, as I said, with Wakey Wakey's astrophysicist. It's apologetics. Oh, yeah, well, we were well aware of those failings with the model. Doesn't mean the world's not a sphere flying through a vacuum. A scientist already knew that. It's not like you're telling us that we're so many, we don't know about our failed model. That's the, that's the attitude. Hello, Quantum Eraser. I'm just waking up. Uh, well, I had to come off moot. Just wait a second. You got me now? Yes. You misread his super chat. He said type A number. A number? Like a contradiction in terms a with, with English and mathematics? No, just type a number. Any number. Oh, as in just type any number. And yes. that means you're bored of the watching this. Are you Have you been watching? Yeah, five minutes. Are you bored? No. Uh, and this model is called the standard model of cosmology, sometimes known as the concordance model or the lambda CDM model. Concordance model? I've never heard it called that before. Anybody else ever heard of that? Type one in the chat if you've ever heard of the concordance label for the heliocentric exploded view that he just gives you on screen a second ago. Or it's on screen now, but smaller. Anybody have concordance? I know QE's going to go, yeah, what? obviously. No, I haven't, but... Tell them what land of CDM means. I've heard of it. I don't know uh, what it means, but I have heard of that. Unlike concordance. It's, yeah, it's the cold, dark matter. Right. 
Yeah, that one's familiar. <laughs> Enough for me to go, now I recognise that. But I, when I hear something that I've never heard before in terms of a label for heliocentrism, heliocentrism concordance, okay. That's something I Same thing. Oh, okay. Currently, the concordance model is the Lambda CDM. Oh, okay. That, that's the shortened, nicer name for it. Okay, I didn't know that. I learn something new every day. Thank you, Adam, by the way. Mumble, mumble. One more time. Can't unmumble. I've got monster munch in my mouth. Thank you. Thank you for that. The idea of the Big Bang, and that's easy enough to understand. Idea? Well, there, was, there was me thinking it was science. The idea of it is easy to understand. Sure. Just like the idea of unicorns is easy to understand. And this might be a reason why... Uh, this idea has been able to capture the imagination of three generations already. Sorry, is that what we're doing? Capturing imagination? My God, this guy. <laughs> I see why you wanted this now, 10th now. There were six minutes in and my blood's starting to calm down and cool down. But the standard model is like actually quite a complicated structure. So I've been working to map this out. This is one way to represent it. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the childhood game Jenga. <laughs> <laughs> Did he really just label this bullshit stacked on top of each other like a kid's it's game of Jenga? Jenga? What, like, you push one block out and the whole thing comes collapsing down? Yeah, yeah, yes. I think that's a fair analogy. I mean, Wakey Wakey, in the second mention on one show, he once used the analogy for the heliocentric model, right, which I love, I like this analogy, as being uh, a globe that, as you approach it, it looks really solid. It looks like it's got a lot of heft and weight to it. But as you get even closer, you realise that it's actually like newspaper. You can see like little print bits sticking out of it and stuff. And you're like, hang on, is this is this papier mache? So you touch it to see if it's papier mache. And without even trying, your finger goes straight through the paper. And you go, oh my God, I've damaged it. What's going on? And you go, it's not solid at all. So you peer through, and when you look through the papier-mâché ball, not only is it completely hollow, there's a couple of people on the other side looking through at you. And they've also done it. They've poked their finger through. And you're like, hello. <laughs> Check it out. It's completely hollow in there. <laughs> Jenga, I like it, mate. I might take that on. In look which you look build... where evolution is. Remember I told you it was connected by the lips? It's, it's a center block. Can't see it. I've tried to make it bigger so I could see, and I still can't. The tower of different blocks on top. Hopefully, make it a bit bigger. Top of each other, and if any of the blocks, you can pull out one of the blocks, and then the other ones will fall apart. You, said, you gotcha. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> That's right. Uh, in my mind, the, the standard model of cosmology is a little bit like this. We have built building blocks on top of each other. So, on top of the Newtonian basics, the, 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 uh, out of date. <laughs> 108 years. Is it 108 or is it 107? Don't want to do the quick maths. Anyway, yeah, more than 100 years out of date, that block. Should we not pull it out? Oh, that's why they still teach it in schools. Because the whole king caboodle collapses. I see. That's why kids still get taught the incorrect nonsense of mass attracting mass. It's a very important little Jenga block. <laughs> the standard model. <laughs> Hello, Anthony. And I, I only joined to point out that if you remove one of those Jenga blocks and the rest of it collapses, look at what he's got as one of the foundational blocks. Newtonian gravitation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's like I was saying, that's why you've still got to teach it. I said that coincidentally in the pre-show. It's like, why do we still have it still taught to, to school kids? Well, because it's fundamental foundation to stop you flying off a spinning water ball flying through a vacuum. So regardless of it now being a non-force force that you can think of as a force that's the uneven distribution of mass causing the uneven distribution of space-time, and that's what you typically think of as you being held to a ball because all things go to the ground, but it doesn't. It's not a force, but you can think of it as a force. Very convoluted nonsense to keep you onto a ball and apologise for you not flying off it. But it's an important Jenga block. So you can't just stop teaching kids that mass attracts mass. Because if they're not taught that, the whole Jenga block collapses. It's such a powerful admission that it's like um, an embedded confession. It's almost overtly admitting that this is all bullshit, but without saying it. So, like, how would you make an admission 
that it's all bullshit without admitting that it's all bullshit. And this is how you do it. Yeah, to a friendly audience, though, it's, does this not remind you of Wakey Wakey with that astrophysicist, Anthony? <laughs> no, it reminds me of Fight the Flat Earth getting debunked by um, George Musa and not accepting it and then doubling down and then getting corrected again by George Musa. That's what it reminds me of. Fair enough. That we have confidence for within our own solar system up to a certain degree. We have, uh, with the standard model, the key is a general relativity model, a specific version of it that assumes evolution over time. He's got a confidence to a certain degree, yet he's alluded continually to it being science. It's like you don't have confidence degrees in empirical outcomes. That's experimental data. That's empirical. But he's got to weasel away from what science actually offers if you follow the method in favour of these correlative studies and models and Jenga blocks. It's like, no, no, no. Typically speaking, you know, the, the absolute truth of what causes what is really easily demonstrated through multiple systematic experimentation based proof. And once you've got that proof, you can benefit humanity. You can advance society. None of this does that. You pop yourself on mute, Anthony, unless you've got something to add. It's not Anthony. And we... It's Jenga Bunks Globe. Who is it? Jenga Bunks Globe. He changed his name. That's the... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, right, yeah. So you... so today, I am not a sleeping warrior. Today, I identify as Jenga Bunks Globe, and you must say that every time. Okay. And your pronouns are she and Zah, right? Yeah. If... Uh... Couple that with uh, this idea of the cosmic origin, the finite origin in time, which is this hypothesis that you know the universe started with a big bang. Uh, a what now? A hypothesis? Yeah. See, back to stealing valor using these science words. So people hear hypothesis and go, "Ooh, science word." Oh, it's definitely proven then. No, if he had a hypothesis, he'd have a, a natural phenomena to observe. What's he got? It's you guys, Jenga Tower. There's no natural phenomenon. This is so far removed from anything that could be described as a valid hypothesis. It's untrue. That is I'd the like main to frame. hear the hypothesis. He won't have one. It's just literally thrown in to convince the audience that he's proving something with this. That's all it's there for. Work. And then two key interpretations in the 20th century were hailed as evidence of this framework. Uh, first, framework. There's that word again. Sound familiar? Yeah, when we accuse Witsit of doing the exact same thing that was done to con you onto a ball, there you go. Here's a few buzzwords that he uses. He's got a logical framework. What's this guy got? Well, he's got a logical framework based on bullshit well, and non-science. At, at least this guy's got blocks. <laughs> the redshift of galaxies was taken to mean that space is expanding. Usually we hear about space is expanding, uh, what is noteworthy is that this is an interpretation. It's a consensus interpretation of a... We know. Yeah, that's something we highlight daily. <laughs> Go on, whoever that was. Oh. Nah, I was just laughing. He's talking about consensus interpretations. Uh, consensus has nothing to do with science. If it's consensus, it's not science. Precisely. Period. Yep. A light phenomenon. Uh, this expansion of space would work really well with this general relativity model. Okay, again, uh, anybody out there listening that's an ether believer, does any of this sound familiar to you? There's a reason <laughs> it sounds familiar. It's because it's the same piss in a different bottle. That assumes evolution and time. Uh, so this was a, the, the, the so-called discovery of the redshift of galaxies and the expansion of the universe was key to making scientists move to an evolutionary model of the universe. Then the second thing uh, that happened was very important in the 1960s was the discovery of the so-called micro cosmic microwave background radiation. This so now we're getting really into what this model is based on, right? The CMB. It was discovered, it was interpreted as a residue of the Big Bang. Uh, I'm not going to go into more detail about those things here but just want to point out that yeah. yeah you better not you better not speak of any detail not even any detail just generalization i debunked 
both of these 14 years ago. Wow. Um, these are on my channel. Then give them a proper plug. What's the title? It has Redshift in the title. It has something like clobbering Redshift and the CMB, something to that effect. I can't even remember. Such enthusiasm on the Quantum Eraser YouTube channel. Be here or be sphere for something bashing. <laughs> <laughs> Just go to the channel and type in CMB or Redshift. And Fine. Got it. The Quantum Eraser YouTube channel. Shins three interpretations, and really only those two. Shifted the in 100 people watching, 101 people watching. Woohoo! Very warm welcome to all of you who've just joined us. If you've joined us because you've smashed a link that one of the regulars has sent out there because we don't get any YouTube love whatsoever, then thank you for clicking on it. Also, please smash it yourself. Great to get over 100 people watching. In the meantime, for anybody who's been here a little while, we are covering Beyond the Big Bang by Bjorn Ekberg. Hopefully, I've said that correctly. And as is normally the routine for those of you who've just joined us and haven't done this already, please go to the channel, which is the Institute of Art and Ideas, and just let them know, by way of the link that is going by in the live stream chat now, that at Nathan Oakley 1980 sent me. The purpose of this is to let him know, we responded to your video, at Nathan Oakley 1980 sent me, and hopefully, were this YouTuber, who's got 170 odd thousand subscribers, to respond, they would return the algorithmic love that we so sorely desire from YouTube, but do not get, by putting a link to our video in his response. Unlikely. Hasn't happened to date. I think the only person who's actually done it, that's a slight eyes, Matthew Learns, or Weathers, as he goes by, who put it on his tiny little channel that no one subscribed to. Thanks for that, Matthew. Really, really helped. Entire theoretical framework for the universe in the middle of the 20th century. So it's with these building blocks and these two key interpretations, it became a professional discipline with big research budgets and so on. That's the foundation. That's the only, that's the only professional cosmology that we've had. It's the, it's the only thing that matters. The group with the big budget. The ones getting the money. This is the most important thing. Prior to this, it used to be, you know, astronomers and philosophers wondering about how space was outside of our own solar system. Then we got funding, big offices, lots of money. Great. Um, it's the only model that we really have worked with in the last 50 years. All we know, so it's got to be right. <laughs> yes. So standard cosmology assumes uh, the universe has a finite origin in time. Uh, Why would it assume anything? Um, and this is in science, you assume the cause of an effect, but that's a suppositional statement known as a hypothesis or scientific prediction that is yet to be validated. In other words, it's clear that that statement doesn't prove anything. When you say, well, A might cause B, I haven't varied it yet to find out. Then the next question anybody's going to ask you is, well, when are you going to vary it to see if it does cause it or not? Whereas in this version of your science, stolen valor of the methodology that's empirical, it's all about whether or not you agree, whether or not consensus has got a good idea of which model you're only ever going to use. That's pathetic, really, isn't it? The cockery of man. This is what's described by the general relativity model. A more fundamental tenet of this is that the claim that mathematical laws that we deduce from our own galaxy or our own neighborhood of the universe apply universally. Yeah, they don't. Because mathematical laws are laws in language to describe things. But they don't apply to the physical and natural world. You might be able to describe or quantify things in the physical and natural world with the language of maths. But again, another reification fallacy. No. Physics deals with the real world. Maths is a language. It's abstract. And this means that because we assume that they have this infinite or until the end of the universe kind of reach. Again, why would you be assuming anything? That we can know the entire temporal... Oh, sorry, so you assumed it, but therefore you can infer that you know things. Again, with the empirical method of science, the thing you're stealing the valor of, you'd actually vary and manipulate that thing that you assumed because it's in a suppositional statement that has yet to be validated. But what you do is take what you call a hypothesis, as you've specifically used that word, and then claim that that is the explanation. You don't detail the fact that it's yet to be validated. You just call a hypothesis an explanation. That's the trick. Use these science words that you know are attached to proof and then say that your hypothesis is 
and then give your mystic make prediction of something. Temporal extent of the universe from its creation until today that we can uh, calculate the time. This is good. As much as I was critical at the beginning that Tenth gave us this video, this is what we do here, right? As much as people might enjoy watching me nag on Jaren to understand this stuff, this is what it's really all about. Yeah, it's all well and good as pointing out that Dave Weiss is using these tricks to con people in the exact same way with the exact same shell game, just for flat earth rather than globe earth. The fact that we agree with the overall premise doesn't mean we agree with the methodology to convince people. Well, in this instance, here we are seeing the real root problem. Everybody thinks they're on a globe because they've been told that science proves it. And here's a man explaining, with his weasel words, why science doesn't prove his claim of a heliocentric word. He's still stealing the valour in the process. He's still offering himself the own, his own credibility through a method that he hasn't applied. He's even detailed how they don't apply it. But this is the real root problem. This is what we really want to deal with on Flat Earth Debate. We want to see wits it. Seeing people like this and taking apart their claim of science and its base, pointing out that they're stealing the valour of science. And the only reason they'd want to do it is to convince you, the audience, that he's proving what he said. Because that's what science does. So you've got to understand that that's what science does to understand how this magic trick works. And there's a good chunk of flat earthers who don't understand this magic trick. It's not that complicated. You've got a word that means proof. So you steal the word and attach it to things that don't have proof. Then people think you've got proof. It's a really easy magic trick to understand. So what do we get when we try and disseminate that to our friends on the flat earth side? You're a scammer. That's what we get. Saying science proves things, scammer. No, it does. Otherwise, there'd be no point in using the bloody words to convince people that you've proved this bullshit like this man does. And so then we have the framework. So now we just have to... Framework. There it is again. How appropriate. Right? Logical frameworks for counter space. Well, he's got his CMB for his ever-expanding universe, hasn't he? Sound familiar? Fill in the stars and the galaxies. It's just puzzle work from here, is the proposition. It's a very bold... Uh, project and is painting a grand picture and we found lots of data to match this picture wow Pre he's going to launch into his correlative studies here we go we also made a lot of observations that contradict this picture oh well how useful oh my god so one of them as you uh know one so uh we just debated this morning dark matter in another panel that's one of the blocks Another apologetic like gravity. Go on with someone from Discord wanting to get a word in. Did they measure anything or did you just calculate it again? Just calculated, already disclosed. Oh. Been added on top to account for discrepancies between theories and observations. So yep, there's another science word. Theories and observations. You see, observation is step one. Observation of a natural phenomena, mind you. But that's step one. Theory comes right at the very end. So you observe natural phenomena, suppose a cause, vary it, prove it causes the phenomena you were studying at set one, then you form your theory. But for this guy, he negates every single step beyond the observation and jumps straight to the science hijacking word of theory. That's what's happening. Right. So you just balance, you just make an equation, then you balance the equation. If the equation works out, you're correct. This is science, yeah, according just... to them. It's disclosed how the process of hijacking it works. It's really simple. In the process of science, step one, observe natural phenomena. Step two, suppose the cause of the effect you are studying. Step three, vary the cause you assume to see if it causes the effect. Then you can form your theory. His version of that same method. Step one, make an observation. Step two, formulate a theory. That's it. That's his method. So where, where did you get any empirical information out of that? I didn't. We had consensus and models that we all agreed on. And now we've got maths. And now we've got Jenga blocks. And we slot it all together in a precarious little tower. And uh, that's what we base it on. There's no empiricism here. Dark matter was essentially invented in the middle of the 20th century, or in the latter half of it, as an explanation for why our observations of galaxies didn't fit this mathematical model. Pretty much like I said before he said it, which is to say it's an apologetic that you invented.
to comport with the model that didn't work. Right. Why didn't the assumption of what it was that we were seeing fit their model? Hmm. Instead of saying there might be something wrong with their framework, the... There's that word again. Might be something wrong with the framework. Right. I mean, if there's something wrong with the framework, like there's an experiment that doesn't really prove what you were hoping it would prove because it's not actually an experiment, you know what you can do in frameworks like that? Just don't call it an experiment. Just leave off the word. Then the framework works. Wonderful, wonderful phrase. It's so flexible. No, Nathan. Once something is marked with science, it's science forever. Even though it doesn't prove anything. Or if it isn't science. But like I say, you can just not call it an experiment and jobs are good. If anybody objects to your science hijacking, you can say, oh, I don't call it experiment no more. <laughs> that's, a, that's a win. The uh, move of cosmologists was to say there must be something else because otherwise our theory would not be correct. So there must be this thing. Yeah. In, in science, you'd be presuming a different cause because you failed to vary it and prove that it caused it. Inflation uh, is something that was invented. You see it at the back there. Uh, you see how all these words that mean fundamental aspects of your world in a heliocentric model was just invented. This, this idea, the inflation idea, it just came out, just pulled it out of our ass. Yeah, just invented it. Yeah. You need something else? You need unicorns in space? Yeah, we can pluck that out of our ass too, if we need to. Anything you like. Well, really. well, well, invented for, inflation, for inflation, the gentleman that discovered it or invented it uh, retracted everything he said about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's still there, though. It's already a Jenga block. Ha, ha, ha. Too late now. <laughs> It's like it's like um Newton. If anybody ascribes this nonsense to me, I'll be furious. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna call it Newtonian gravity. <laughs> it's, part, it's part of the paper mache. Yeah, yeah. We've already slapped that layer on. Well, and can't, can't you unglue it? No, no. It's already look. It's already a Jenga block. It was invented as an explanation for how the universe could possibly come into the shape that we can observe today from shape. How, how you you're observing a shape? You say, no. This big bang. That's a mathematical theory for how. Uh, oh, so it's a mathematical theory. Oh, I see. So just an it's abstract kind of description in in language then. That that's could a have very convoluted. Contradiction in terms. Mathematical theory is a contradiction in terms. This yes, vernacular vernacular is going all over the place by now. It's getting very messy. He's almost at the end, to be honest. Um, dark energy was then invented to account for this found ostensible acceleration of space. <laughs> a lot of stuff invented in your heliocentric world that you think is real. So some guy just Wait. talks about it, invents it, conjures it into reality, and now you th you believe it. That's how it works. Did he just say acceleration of space, as in available volume? Yep. How does available volume accelerate? <laughs> This is just conceptual language, Arwen. If I need a dimension that doesn't exist to bend, I can invent one and bend it. And so on. So all of it is building blocks on top of each other um, to sort of create patches on what the original framework could not do, step by step. So today there are some crises in cosmology and challenges to some of these upper blocks, uh, such as dark matter that's been... So let me get it straight. These are fundamental building blocks for the world you think you live in, and you're going to now detail the problems with the foundational blocks of the reality you say we live in. I see. Does nobody else have massive alarm bells going off? Is it just us? Yeah, yeah, it's just us. Debated here, but very few, like very few scientists, want to question the blocks below. The ones that hold up these dark matter and dark energy blocks. Do we give a crap, right? While he's saying about what scientists are concerned about questioning. Like, meanwhile, there's plenty of phenomena that they could be studying if they were actually scientists. But they don't want to question one of the fundamental premises of their worldview. Because it's precarious. It's just so pathetic. And right, isn't the would... whole cornerstone principle of the supposed science, not the method, but the idea of it is like, oh... You, you work through data, you figure things out, and then, oh, something uh, turned out to be a misconception. Well, then you correct said misconception and you move on. Why is that the only thing that isn't happening with the heliocentric model? Like, 
No, no, no. They will they will take dark matter, dark energy, because otherwise it wouldn't work, making everything even more convoluted instead of just recognizing maybe it was just wrong. Yeah, do you know what else follows this pattern, Arwin? He's got his 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 building block framework on screen. Another thing that follows the exact same pattern and has the same issues with people not wanting to pull at certain strings is a web of lies. Same principle. Oh, well, we don't want to address yeah. that particular aspect of this web of lies because the entire charade will come falling down. It's the same principle. That w what you're looking at has been described as a logical framework. It's actually a web of lies. But argue it's like a presuppositional framework. It's like this is everything you have to presuppose in order for all of this to seem to work. Yeah, well, okay. take a look at his foundation. No, okay. no, okay. listen to Web what of he lies. said. Listen to what he said. Pull up his blocks. He said all these blocks down beneath the CMB or the uh, CDM are are pretty much, they're solid. So look at his block down there. You got Newtonian mechanics, gravity. Uh, that's been debunked 108 years ago. Redshift, that's debunked. Nucleosynthesis is just a conjuring of nonsense. Look it up. It's pretty funny. General relativity, that's gone. Universal expansion, what's the difference between that and inflation? CMB's gone. Evolution, what the hell is that? <laughs> Dark matter, all these blocks, all these Jenga blocks are gone. Too funny. Well, well, if there's rather just not address wave them. duality with light, well, maybe then there's also a force, non-force duality with gravity. No, no, it's just saying that the scientists, in quote, just don't want to address them. So where QE has just quickly said no, they all have been debunked or superseded, well then, if they're fundamental building blocks, then no one's ever going to want to look at them because the entire structure, again, web of lies. Shout out to Unitox Femu. I never thought that geometry would be macronuclear. And I never thought we'd be studying unicorn digestion, Unisox family, but there we go. We've, we've all got strange things occurring as flat earthers. Thank you for the super chat. Research that this, this reluctance to question the blocks underneath uh, is not because they are themselves so solid and proven beyond doubt, but rather because if any of them are in doubt or even slightly wrong, then this entire Jenga tower would fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, keep say, emphasize that some more. Because they be are themselves so impressive. solid and proven beyond doubt, but rather because if any of them are in doubt or even slightly wrong, then this entire Jenga tower would fall apart. So it's just too, it's too difficult to start too. waiting. We, we are in agreement with somebody on the opposite side. He's fundamentally ingrained into heliocentric belief, right? It's part of it. But in every aspect, we, we would agree with him as we're nodding along, and we're preemptively saying what we would object to heliocentrism with and why we would object to him. And then he pretty much verbatim repeats our objections. What's going on? Again, 10th, kudos. Wading into what this stuff is built on. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the... Alternatively, let uh, Beyond Art... Uh, beyond... Oh, sorry. The Institute of Art and Ideas, please let the YouTube videographer know at Nathan Oakley 1980 sent me, as I said before, in the vain hope that they would algorithmically hook us up by putting a link to at Nathan Oakley 1980 in their video as we have done for them. So kindly help them in the algorithmic love that they will receive from Nathan Oakley 1980 channel watchers by putting a comment that says at Nathan Oakley 1980 sent me, helping him in the algorithm and hopefully he'll return the favour. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed that. I enjoyed hearing him pretty much parrot what we were objecting to as a nonchalant, wakey-wakey-esque uh, uh, astrophysicist. Oh yeah, well, that's wrong in the model. But we wouldn't want to be looking at that because it would all collapse. So we'll just leave that well alone while we endeavour to move forward based on that nonsense that would all collapse if we looked at it. Excellent stuff. Thanks, Ted. Maybe we can just play some Ball Earth Jenga. Sounds like fun. That's what we do daily, Arwen. That is what we do here. <laughs> we, yeah. We play yeah. Ball Earth Jenga with the ballers. But what we do, slightly different spin on it, we get them to push the blocks out, don't we, when they come here? You know, when I first uh, watched this, I, I had that 
your summary at the end is what I felt when I first watched this. It's an admission uh, from an insider, one of their own, uh, pulling back the curtain behind the so-called framework that is the Jenga Tower cosmology, as uh, Paula says in chat. <laughs> Well, I hope the attitude of the chat has actually changed slightly and they're like, yeah, that was good. I enjoyed listening to that. It makes it makes everything we've done in respect to people who have had criticisms of us in recent videos. We're like, why are you infighting? Why are you uh, uh, nipping at the heels of Jaron or Dearth or whoever it is that we're critiquing in terms of science in this specific uh, context? Well, this is why. So this was an excellent video because you can see how astrophysicists hijack the terminology of science to convince an audience that they're proving things. And he's disclaiming where we would point out the model's wrong. Very nonchalant in his way of doing it, but nevertheless, he's doing the same thing we do. He's then pointing out where they haven't got science. That doesn't alter his fully ingrained into every cell of his being that is to hijack the valour of science and use the words like theory, like hypothesis, like science itself. He used all of them. So it lends credence to our justification for saying, no, we need to know this stuff as flat earthers if we're going to win. If we're going to achieve victory in debate, you need to know what you're up against. And this is what we're up against. We're up against the hijacking of science to prove things where they haven't really been proven. Just using the words that suggest proof when they haven't actually got any. And this is important. If you want to be a good flat earther, know how you are duped onto being on a ball. That'll be the yeah. thing that, that progresses you. That, that's, that's, oh, go on, whoever it is who wants to. No, that it. was me. Uh, he said earlier that the reason why it keeps going and going the way it is, and he's an insider seeing the problem. He said, today science is about winning funding. Up of it, making a tower even more unstable. Tower of Babel. It's nonsense. <laughs> it, it is a lot of Babel, though. Yeah. Good video good choice. Good stuff. What's up, Eli? What's up, y'all? Yo, so I'm home, Sorry. so I'll get with you probably um, tomorrow. All right, no problem. The um, yeah, the, uh, it seems like everybody's on the subject right now, which is awesome because that means we're all getting a, an intellectual upgrade. Um, not just you know, uh, studying the housekeeping questions or you know, uh, logical syllogisms and things like that, but also the history, understanding where this all stems from is just as important. So I'm glad we're talking about this. I'm glad too. When you when you say all, do you mean flat earth debate or other people? I mean everyone that I can potentially touch when I speak, Neil, when I leave. Okay, here. I got you. Oh, that puts a different spin on it. You're saying that this this you mean we're being successful? Yeah, um, because remember yesterday, I, uh, I I said that um. Uh, the the YouTuber probably Alexandria. She just dropped a new video about uh. Let me see what the title of it is. Instead of just saying evolution. While you're looking that up, uh, uh, this normally brings a smile to, well, specifically the people on the panel's face. So, in terms of um subscribers and such like, members and patrons, several people have returned. I may have mentioned this previously, but several more have now retur <coughs> returned and just casually started making comments where they left off previously. For whatever reason, they abandoned this show. Many have returned. Nice. That's good news. Very. I always raise, so when I see them, I'm like, oh, I haven't seen you for a while. Raised eyebrow. Good, good, good. G give us an example, Nathan, of what you mean. I mean, Wait, somebody that would have disappeared... Time entirely and uh condemned us because the latest hotness that they found in this subject arena was saying that we were bad and evil and then they've like a good doggy just gone all oh, right well then i'll unsubscribe from that particular group of people nathan oakley 1980 channel specifically and then for whatever reason recently we've been talking about whatever we've been talking about and a whole bunch of people have come back old patrons have re-given me their patronage 
old subscribers have resubscribed and started commenting again, and people have rejoined as members where they had previously been members and left. So while I don't know about new subscribers, I do know when I've seen somebody who was there, disappeared, and then comes back again. That's something I can say yeah. that's noteworthy. I thought you were referring to the likes of Dawn Treader. I heard you reference Dawn. The other... No, not Dawn. Um, you referenced somebody the other day who we, we talked about him and he magically appeared in chat. And I thought you were referencing somebody that was reciting the position, but on their side. Well, look at Taggy. Taggy's come back. Did he ever go away? Yeah, he went to Jim Panthers for a while. It was the guy that um, he got sighted yesterday. It wasn't Dawn Treader, but he was from that era. Uh, uh, Akumo virus. Akumo, yeah. We sighted Akumo and magically, like a fucking genie in a bottle, he was there. No swearing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, he came. He came through. Yeah. He was Ooh, in do, these guys, do these guys have each other's numbers or what? Like because it like so. Say you're a Kumu virus and you're like disinterested with the subject. Like there, there, there's not going to be anybody in. Well, I guess I would have to assume this in your hometown or anybody around you that also listens in, just waiting for your name to get mentioned. So they're like, oh, they're talking about you, right? Like. Because I don't get notifications from Discord. I don't get so I don't I don't know like if I wasn't around, I wouldn't know what was going on. I don't know how they just pop up on the scene by by mere mention of their names. And that's pretty cool that you guys stay abreast to the flight of debate. I appreciate you guys. However you're doing it. So anyway, um just really quick, and I guess this channel can get an honorable mention just by the title alone. Don't know what the video, like, you know, what, what resources he's used, what research he has in the video. But I, again, this has been a hot topic uh, for some months now. So four months ago, uh, the People Profiles, they dropped a video called Charles Darwin Evolution versus Creation Documentary. Um, so that's an honorable mention. Um, and then the probably Alexandra channel that I was talking about. Her video is titled The Theory of Evolution, How Mysticism Became Science. Very interesting stuff. Like, that if you want like to understand... Say again? That sounds like a Neil deGrasse Tyson title. Hmm. Well, if you want to understand how we got into this mess in the first place, these videos are a good start. Um, and uh, also subscribing to Nathan as well. You know when they used to say that science corrects itself? Why isn't science correcting itself with this nonsense on, on, on like Newtonian gravitation? Why is it that science is turning a blind eye to these morons? It isn't. It's not science that's doing all those things. It's the people that's turning the blind eye. No, no, no. You answered this question not... wrong. Stop. Come on me straight away. The reason they say science moves on, science doesn't prove things, all that sort of stuff, is merely leaving the door open to correct their pseudoscience when it's proven wrong. That's all it is. It's just leaving an out, an exit. That's all it is. Hey, Jenga and Elijah, make sure you go on mute after you're done talking. That's it's the, the, the metaphysical foundations of modern science by E.A. Burrett. B U R T T. Um, I haven't read the whole book, but um, he says it all lacks empiricism, what they have today. And, you know, obviously they could turn that around like this guy still be in the same Jenga tower that he knows could fall apart. Oh, Anthony, so this, please this go guy... on mute. Please, please, Anthony. Every time you join, you make the audio horrendous. Go ahead, 10th. No, I'm just saying that to find books as well as today's video, that an insider would start calling out the non-science within the claimed science. I mean, he today he said, look, they, they're not doing the scientific method early on. They're calculating. They're assuming. He used the word assume so many times today, this guy. So it's like, 
okay, well, we have a problem with the model. Um, we are not ready to jettison the model, but so let's invent dark matter to answer this problem or redshift or cosmic backgrounds. So they're always adding on to a flawed foundation. This is what the guy admitted today. And he's within the system. And he said, it's all about funding. It's not science anymore. These are beautiful videos. That beautiful would be the word I would use, but yes, they're very good. Well, I say that because when someone looks at me as a tinfoil hat, conspiracist, dumb flat earther, I could just say this video. Fair enough. You know, the show is called Flat Earth Debates. We actually, <laughs> my dog just tipped the chair on himself. We, um, we actually debate if flat earth is real, if globe rhetoric, heliocentric cosmology models, are, we actually debate these matters. Uh, and people want to say we're crazy when we're actually talking about it, when they are avoiding talking about it. It's it's funny thing how I can't get any of these people to want to sit down and discuss. Uh, gas pressure without containment, they start choking on their spit and they're ready to run. They don't know. Oh, yes. Now's a good time to bring it up because the, the show was over yesterday. Um, but well, uh, that guy had a good point. Um, and all, well, I can't even, I wish I could uh, articulate what he said. But I guess I'll just uh, speak my piece. If we could take this thing on the road somehow, um, I don't know, pick one day, two days out of the week where we actually, or Nathan actually, however it's done, uh, speaks to other individuals out there, like sort of, sort of like a, a, a flatter Dave kind of deal, only around the housekeeping questions. So the so people would be bringing Nathan or whomever on the show specifically to talk about the housekeeping questions and why it's so important, and that would kind of just open the door to pretty much everything. It wouldn't be like a debate or this that it'd be people understanding, you know, oh okay, this is what's going on. Now they could tie that to oh okay, because I thought this was science, and then you know I have my other favorite channels talking about evolution for some reason and now i understand because this is what science is they don't have they don't actually have any and then on top of that they don't have any measurements for the claims of measurement either wow that's so interesting i really wish i i, I hope that somehow someone can articulate what i'm saying better and kind of make this happen eli it's in the works just be patient yeah well am i mute What's going on? You don't hear me? Oh my God! Don't 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 come behind my beautifully not beautiful <laughs> said thing, and and deter people from you, you said thing, talking about you said thing. spreading. You, someone said someone, you someone said. Do you have any it's questions about asking questions? Debate. Shut the fuck what up! You, you talked all the time. Now it's my turn. Chucky, are it's you from the lab now. in Jupiter? Get or on are you mute. On Get Earth? on mute. Make yourself a cup of tea. Go feed Relax. your dog. Go feed your so, dog. Go feed your dog. Dogs Take are a fed. Walk. Went out. Don't worry about the dogs. Now, every time I try to talk, every time I try to talk about, shut the fuck up. Uh, about flat earth. What's wrong? Right? To the stars, to the sextant. What does this have to do with flat earth? I want to talk about the surface of the Earth from surface <laughs> Earth level. Hmm? Don't go to the sky. I don't care about gravity. Nothing like that. Only optics and geometry. That's all. So I ask for you. You do realize. We'll time you, and you time realize, again, but... we'll avoid the subject in hand and we'll go to exotic dark matter Dark energy, I think you have not the first clue about, not the second, and not the millionth clue about. Let's talk about the Earth. Is it flat or is it not? 
It's black. Now, you, now you, you can continue with, 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 with the dev. You can continue Jackie? with the dev now. Jackie, you have any questions about any of the housekeeping questions? Like, uh, for instance, uh, you brought up the sex thing. Can you get uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm talking about the sex thing. Like, the like, like, does everybody hear question? how Jackie is talking through me? I didn't interrupt him that yeah, once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so heard you. I heard you. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me because about you talking to someone else. me, not me. Are you only going to talk when I'm talking, or can I? Yeah. Can I go? <laughs> yes, he is. Well, right. you're so, talking all the time, it, so it's kind of hard not to talk. Asshole! You. Let me shut up, Chiki, you stupid prick. Okay. Yeah. So now you have kind of triggered one of the trap cards of the housekeeping question. Speaking about the sextant, can you get an elevation angle to from the from from the horizontal? To the GP, uh, to the GP, and then to the, I probably like fuck that up. Excuse me. Yeah, language. you did. Can you get an ele elevation angle with the curve adjacent? <laughs> so, eh? can I get the? Can you get an elevation, elevation angle, angle with the curve adjacent? Mm -hmm. Yes. I hey, urge you to go uh, read the Euclid, the book number three. Even in number one, it's suggested that. Elevation angle is not necessarily a straight line. So really? yes, that's known for over two thousand years. Next question. Okay, next question. Detail how you actually do that then. So detail getting an elevation. You read you read Euclid books. Do you need to fundy mute me great. before I've asked the question? Yes, Nathan. No, you won't be fundy muting me. So my question is. Tell us how you do that in physical reality. That's get an elevation angle from a curved adjacent. Well, and you go and read postulation Nathan, 16 in book three, Anthony, and you will know, and you will Anthony's know. Anthony's determined to ruin this, isn't he? Got his dog barking, he's off mute. It's only the fifth time I've asked him. Anthony. I'm not off mute, I'm pushed at all. No, I know, it's Anthony. Decided to just op open his mic and let his dog bark into the show. No, it's my dog. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's Jackie's dog. Does your dog bite? Uh, who okay. cares? Never know. He All just right, barks. Jackie. That is not my dog. Thanks for that. Okay, Chikey. It's time to show. So can you pull up AutoCAD and show us how you can get an elevation angle off a of curve to Jason? In AutoCAD, please. No, I don't need AutoCAD. Did I mention AutoCAD? I mentioned Euclid. No, I did. Postulation 16, book three. I did. I said it. Okay, so I it's heard, time I to you. show us then. Hold on, you show us then. No, I'm it's asking you to show to us. Show now. I'm asking you to show us. You we heard want me to show Chikey, something on something you talking. mentioned? Not done talking. I heard you. You cited it yesterday. We looked. That's fine. Okay, notwithstanding that you've cited Euclid. Excellent. Now show us in practical application how you do that. Measurement of an angle from a curved adjacent, please. Detail it in physical reality. Mm, every time you measure an angle, it's from a curved adjacent. Mm? Even, when you, even when you measure from with a sextant, do you have a flat plane under you? What, what's that under you, on your feet? Huh? It's called ground. It's never flat. Yeah, detail the process. That's it. That was garbage. Telling me that the ground is never flat doesn't tell me how you acquire an elevation angle measurement from a curved baseline. Now, it's a contradiction in terms because an angle is two straight lines, Shikey. One of them can't be curved. So you haven't detailed how the curved earth will give you an elevation angle measurement with a curved adjacent. It's nonsense. You can't have a curved adjacent. There's no such thing as a curved adjacent. The adjacent straight. So what you're talking is utterly absurd and you haven't still fulfilled what I asked for, which was detailing how this would actually be done in physical reality. What's being done? Okay, you pick up your sextant Again. and do what on a curved earth? You, you, you connect one point to another point. That's a straight line. One point connected to another point is a straight line that's not a curve. So that fails on its ass if you're explaining how you've got curved adjacents because one point meeting another is not a curved adjacent. So the... the, the Stuttering bitch! 
Now you can shut the fuck up. <laughs> you understand, do you, Dumbo? Two points isn't a curved adjacent. You failed. You don't understand how this stuff works and you're just bullshitting with Euclid and then talking and chanting through us while we annihilate your stupid garbage point. So stop chanting through me and listen. Two uh, points. No, no, you're chanting. You need ejecting. Like every other asshole that comes here when they get annihilated. Maybe you can moan about the mute button. Well, I annihilate okay, your stupid when, claim. Tell me when it's my turn, Nathan. You've already had your turn. You said two points, and now you're chanting through the fact that's a straight line. You feel that needs chanting through or asking when your turn to talk is. You gave me what I needed, two points. You've said it. Now, all you can do is chant through the middle of me. Right, Discord? You're not hearing me anymore? Yeah, that's right, audience. When assholes present their claim and I listen, two points, he said. And I address that that's not curving. That's what he's been asked for. He chants incessantly straight through the top of it. So Discord can't hear. Well, you'll be damned if I'm going to stop my audience from hearing me, Chikey. Yeah, they will hear me take apart that two points isn't curving. Annihilating your garbage that you said you could do. Get a curved adjacent to give you an angle. It won't. So you fail. You lose. Chanting through me is just an asshole move of a loser. That's what you did because you lost, Chiki. You're a loser chanting through me. Stop it. So that's a straight line, Chiki. Do you want to get back to the debate you lost and started chanting through me instead of facing your loss? Two points, you say. That's not curving. That's a straight line, Chiki, for an angle. Has to be straight. That's what an angle is. You're going to respond? Now you've had your little burst of fundy muting. Are you going to respond? This is where you lose, Chikey. No response whatsoever, right? Coward. Only you're chanting when you lose, right? You total coward. Loser. Not got much to say anymore, right, Chikey? Scumbag. That's what you do when you lose. For all, the, all of you out there who want to moan about how I've got a mute button. Oh, really? So, realistically, my summary of the two points he detailed that we all heard he wasn't muted should forego a rebuttal in favour of his chanting straight through the top of the rebuttal that annihilates his point. Because that's fair. That would be neutral if he got to chant through the rebuttal, wouldn't it? That would be totally neutral. Right, Chikey, you total asshole? Why aren't you chanting anymore? Did, 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 uh, am I the only one deaf here, or did uh, anyone else hear? What, the rebuttal that you chanted through? No, nobody in Discord heard it, because you chanted through every last word of it so that they wouldn't hear it. I addressed your two points. Are you talking over me again? Let me finish this. Is that all you got? I point out that two points is a straight line. He moans about whether or not he's getting talked over. In other words, the, de the discussion, the debate goes no further. All he's got to offer from this point forward is chanting through me. Non-addressment of the fact he said two points. Straight line, Chikey. We're going to move forward or is it silence again? Am I muting oh, him, me. ladies and gentlemen? Is this him being muted? He heard. He heard the rebuttal. He's got nothing for me. But while I'm in the middle of pointing out how he failed, he's got plenty of say. He's got plenty of say now I'm in the middle of talking, right, Chikey? This is asshole behaviour from losers. We win with our points. He loses, and this is what he does. Chance straight through the top of me. Loser. So two points, that's a straight line. That's where we got to. Loser. Loser. So, so you're going to focus on the fact I pointed out you lost rather than the two points. Me... I'm trying to get the discussion back on track to the point where I say you lost. You won't concede your loss. You'll focus on the fact I'm calling you a loser. We've got two points. That's a straight line. That's not a curved adjacent. Where you lost was Can with two points. Two... Oh, you're going to chant through the two points, be connected to your loss. So we can't have the loser, loser, loser line work if I'm connecting the fact you lost with your two you points. Never had the yeah, he won't. See, if I leave the line open, I never get to conclude the rebuttal because the chanting start before the conclusion comes. So it's very easy to just shut the line down, calmly say to the audience, without any fundy muting from Chikey, that when he said two points, he needs to start chanting through the fact that that doesn't comport with his 
angle from a curved adjacent. He hasn't got one. That's where his argument failed and that's where he lost. His now focus on loser, loser, loser chanting through the top of me. Yeah, you are a loser. You lost when you detailed two points for an angle. That's not curving. That's not a curved adjacent. You were asked to provide it and put it into practical application. You failed. You lost. Chikey. Any response to that, Chikey? Still need to say the magic words, Nathan. What, suck my balls, you lost, you fundy? Mm, that's not so much. Mm, yeah, 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 maybe an address to the two points that you brought up that were not muted, that were not chanted through, that were not talked through, they were refuted, and when they were, you chanted through the rebuttal so that you didn't have to hear it, Chikey. Seems, seems, seems you, you... Like, like are you doing now? See, what I did while I pointed out what he was doing was close the line, and what he's doing with the line closed is going, this, 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 so that my rebuttal can't be heard. That's their tactic. That's what they do. Are so you going to address the two points, the argument, the end of the argument, or are you going to chant and start talking before I summarise your remember, loss? And I... there he is talking. Before I summarise where he lost, he thinks that chanting through the top of it will negate his loss. Somehow, chanting through the summary is going to make him win. Right, Chucky? Is that why you started talking before I summarised your loss? Yeah, ask me, ask me a question and don't let me speak. And why would the two points that you detailed be in any way comporting with a curved adjacent? Two points aren't making a curve. Go ahead, keep talking. I did. I pointed out where you lost and you asked me to keep talking. Yeah, keep talking, yeah. I did. I pointed out where you lost. Two points isn't giving you a curved adjacent. To have a curved earth give you an elevation angle, you've got to get a curved earth to give you that angle. And that would be a curved adjacent for your triangle. And you haven't got one. You haven't got a curved adjacent. You detail two points. I urge you, you weren't chanted through. One of us summarised it each and every time you've chanted through it. What's your response? I don't know. Can I speak? So your response is to ask permission to be speaking when you're being asked for a response. That is his response, ladies and gentlemen. Lines cleared, conclusions been given, he's heard the summary of where he lost, and his response is to ask whether he's got permission to talk or not. I mean, he doesn't need permission now while he's chanting through me with the line closed. Doesn't need my permission to chant straight through the top of what I'm saying. But he needs my permission when he's specifically being asked about those two points that aren't curved and won't give him a curved adjacent. He's being asked to address that. You have permission to speak. Go. Okay, so I have two two points connected with straight lines. That's about it. That's well, that's not a curve. If that's about it, that's where you fail on your ass. Because a curved adjacent isn't two points that are straight. You complete stupid nincompoop. You need them to be curving. Lots and lots and lots of points. Not just two. That's a straight line. That's a flat earth proof. That's an elevation angle that will require a straight line, a flat baseline. That's not a curved baseline. That's two points. That's straight. That's a flat earth proof. And all he's got while I disseminate this flat earth proof, as before, was to chant through the top of the flat earth proof he's just disseminated. His argument proves a flat earth. <laughs> Ergo, like now, he has started chanting through the fact. His argument proves a flat earth. Needs chanting through, right? How can I chant when you took over me, when you finally mute me? Nobody chanted through you. You were asked to address the fact that your argument proved a flat earth. You were invited, and then there was silence, to address the fact your argument proved earth is flat. You were invited to address that. Then there was silence. Then you told no, me that you no, were being no. chanted you, you through. Me, and here we are before I'm finished with and... you chanting straight through the top of me. I mean, it is shocking how these people project precisely what they do when they need to interrupt something that's devastating by telling me that I'm doing it to them when literally mid-sentence he has started chanting through me. So he's no longer listening. He's not going to address the point that's been chanted through. That's why he's chanted through it. So he doesn't have to address the fact that he has proven a flat earth with his example, with the two points that are a straight flat baseline. You were invited to address that. Then there was silence. Nobody chanted through you. And while I pointed that out, you started chanting through me, as the audience just heard. So now again, I'm going to invite you to address the fact that your example, where you were claiming to prove a curved adjacent, was actually two points proving a flat earth. Now you're invited to address that. You may speak. Nothing in the arsenal when you haven't got any excuses. 
What? Asking for permission? Total silence? Was that me fundy muting your concise rebuttal? You proved the flat earth, Chikey. Oh, it seems now I'm back to talking in the silence you uh, left. I'm based, I'm You've now decided my... that this is the time to talk, right, Chikey? You left a prolonged silence. No rebuttal came. I point out there's a prolonged silence, and while I'm pointing it out, he then decides he's going to talk. Like now. You're talking straight through the middle of me in the middle of the silence you left. Then I talk. Yes, 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 and now yes, you're doing yes, it again, yes, Chikey. Yes, I haven't finished the all sentence. I will do from now. What you'll do is chant through me because you've got nothing to offer. But every time you do it and I address that you're doing it, what, you think you're getting further away from the flat earth proof you just offered? You offered a flat and earth some proof. Some of us. Some... Chant through it. Chant through it. Share your pain. It's more like stuttering through it, Nathan. Yeah. he's not. He thinks that that means he's not listening to it or that the audience doesn't get to hear it. While I point out for the fifth time that he's proved a flat earth with this example, what he's got while I'm saying this, ladies and gentlemen, is to chant through me. Yeah, I said that's the intention. So was that stuttery mumble an address to the flat earth proof you've offered rather than proving a curve no, adjacent? No, no. I, I'm just... And before I get to the end of that summary again, he's off the mic immediately through the top of me. I mean, it's only reasonable that we should be on a neutral platform where that's totally tolerable. And me asking why you've just proved a flat earth gets chanted through yeah, yeah. rather well, than addressed. Well, can... And there it is again. I'm starting to ask him why he's proving a flat earth with his example with two points. But before I get to the end of the question, he started chanting through me. I mean, on a neutral platform, you, the audience, would never hear the question. Here, I will just shut that shit down as I'm in the middle of my sentence so that the audience can hear that I have asked him the question Intention. and then point out that this is you what we get. get it. This is what we get on a neutral platform. I stated it clearly. Everyone heard it. No, no what we're hearing is you, you saying the same the thing intention. over and over again. And now Arwen and Neil have decided to join in. Because obviously that's going to be really helpful. Neil and Arwin also welcome, doing what you're welcome, doing, uh, Neil, which is talking welcome. straight through you, the you top of me, join. like you're doing now, Chikey. Let's let's all find the mute each other. No, no. Let's address the flat Earth proof you use with two points no, on no, the flat base or all fundy mute each other because that's the alternative for you. For me, I readdress the issue of you proving a flat Earth. And while I readdress the issue of you proving a flat uh, earth, uh, the, the, the you talk straight talking. through the top of me, fundy muting me because you think that that's going to be somehow successful yes, and get you course. away if, if... from the flat earth proof that I'm pointing out you've used when claiming you're proving a curved adjacent. I'll do it again and again and again and again and leave the protracted silences that you actually have to offer when I ask why you proved the flat earth. Yes, yeah, say them. You can ban me. Go right ahead. Right, is you being banned and addressed to why you proved the flat earth with your example that was supposed to prove a curve to Jason? There's that protracted silence again. Maybe it's my fundy mute button. Maybe that extensive rebuttal to the flat earth he just proved with the two points on a flat baseline that isn't a curve to Jason. Maybe that extended silence was his fantastic rebuttal. Maybe him interrupting no, me right now, right now, now, is him concisely giving you all the proof of the curved adjacent that he claimed he got when he lost. Maybe that's what he was doing when he was interrupting that just then. And this right now. I never now. said it. I never said it. You said you could prove that you can get a curved adjacent, then you cited Euclid for your curved adjacent. Then you told us about the two points that would be measured. And I pointed out that you proved the flat earth with that. And while I did point out that you proved the flat earth with that, you chanted continually through no, the top of it. You pointed at false, false claims I never made. You said you could prove a curved adjacent was being utilised. You were asked specifically by Eli, who fucked it up the first time and then declared how he messed up the question and then repeated the question, confirmed that you understood it, and you took us to Euclid to claim that you could prove a curved adjacent. You didn't. You detailed two points. I then pointed out that you were proving a flat earth and you then continually fundy muted and chanted through the fact that you proved a flat earth with your claim, not a curved adjacent as you said you would. I never said I have. So we've got a recording of you being asked to prove your curved adjacent, you saying you can and taking us to Euclid, and now you're just going to lie. So Chikey is just a carbon copy of every other lying scumbag, like a Kumu virus, like Rumpus. Now he's just going to lie about what he was asked to claim, what he said he could prove, and what he failed to prove. And what we got while I pointed that out, that he's just a liar, is constant non-stop chanting through the top of me. That's all we've got from you, Chikey. Uh, no. Ad homes, ad homes. Ad hom. No, detailing that you are indeed chanting straight through the top of your flat earth proof that you offered for us is not an ad hominem attack. It's not 
an attack at you, the person, in lieu of an argument. It's me asking you why you demonstrate a flat baseline with two points when claiming you can measure a curved adjacent to give you an elevation angle. That's not an ad hom. You're an idiot. No, I never said it. You did. You said you could get a curved adjacent. You're a liar. I did say... I did. Yeah, you did. And if you deny it one more time, Judas, I'll permanently remove you like I permanently <laughs> removed a Kumu virus. Because at this point, you're just a liar. And I don't tolerate people who overtly lie in the face of proof that they've lied. Yes, you were asked to prove that you could get a curved adjacent to give you an elevation angle. Yes, you cited Euclid. And yes, you then detailed two points along a horizontal baseline. And I pointed out that proves a flat earth. Now you're denying that you said you could prove that, making you a liar. So are we going to permanently remove you, Chai Kim? Never come back? A bit like Akumu virus and Rumpus? Do I continually did. lie? Maybe chant through me asking if you're going to Go continually right lie. Just chant through me asking if you're just going to lie that you didn't claim that you could get a curve to Jason. It is just going to be chanting through the top of me, trying to concisely get you to listen to me asking you to clarify your lie for a third time so I can remove you permanently, as you suggested I will do. Scumbag. Okay. Remove me permanently. Go ahead. So you, you want to lie again that you were not trying to prove a curved adjacent elevation angle. Just no, lie I wanted and it will to permanently remove, me permanently. remove you. Please oblige you. Uh... Can, can, can you as an audience understand why this is intolerable behaviour? Like complete scumbag behaviour from ballers. Yeah? While I'm pointing out how scummy it is, what do you think Chaiki's doing in the background? I mean, of course, he's going to be chanting straight through the top of me. Go ahead. See? He's saying, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. That's what he's doing. Scumbag behaviour. He's lost. He won't concede. But he'll drag out the non-concession for as long as humanly possible. Won't he? He said that was the intent. Thank you for the Talk colour commentary you. over the top of me also, oh, Neil. I really appreciate it. Uh, hey, so I, 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 I wasn't muted. Someone did hear it. Uh, 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 stop there for us. One last time, Jaggy. Yeah, if you can extend that first vowel for at least five seconds, you'll successfully chant through whatever I'm saying by extending the first thing that you say for as long as you... You think that tactic's clever? No, it's not. You've lost, Chaiki. What you did do is prove a flat earth with your example and then chant through <laughs> every single, like now, like you've just done, every single rendition of your flat earth proof you gave us. Got chanted through. It's cowardly. That's all it is. I agree. It's cowardly. Yeah. So Wait. what you actually had in rebuttal was long protracted silences in response to the fact that you proved a flat earth and then continual and non-stop chanting and fundy muting as a tactic to get away from your embarrassing loss. Yeah. Why don't you let me finish my sentence then? I did. You've had several long and protracted silences where you asked for permission to talk at the end of the protracted silence to what, make out that you've been muted? No, no, you were given plenty of opportunities. What you did do is use the opportunities to not say anything and then start talking while I'm in the middle of saying things. That's your shtick. Mm -hmm. It's your MO. It's your tactic. When you lose, you start chanting through the fact that you measured a flat earth when claiming you could get an elevation angle measurement from a curved baseline. You failed, you proved a flat earth, and then you did what you're doing now, which is chant through no the conclusion baseline. each and every time. Because you're, no, is... you're a coward. So you're happy to admit that you're a coward and then start re-exhibiting the exact same cowardly behaviour like you're doing now. There's no baseline. Right, that, yeah, there is a baseline. There's absolutely a baseline. You think you're going to restart up the debate when you've already detailed the two points that are straight, only two points, that's straight line, not curved, by saying there's no baseline now through the top of me. What what is the baseline? What 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 are you gonna just chant through the top of your loss? We're never gonna get away yes, from it. What, what is the baseline? No, 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 we're not gonna get your what 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 through the top while you desperately attempt to segue away from your loss where you proved the flat earth chikey. That will not fly here. I will hold you to task until you lie again that you hadn't been claiming a curved adjacent measurement when you proved a flat earth. Where, where's the base? No, you don't need to chant. You need to concede that you proved the flat earth I'm rather than a curved adjacent. No, don't chant. Listen to me trying to get the concession out of a weasel coward. The, the upper straight the, line. The, 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 the chanting continues, right, coward? It's the baseline. So you don't need to constantly chatter and stammer and stutter the word baseline through every word I say, you utter coward. Hmm? 
Who is it? But you proved to flat earth with the two points. That's yeah, the baseline. Yeah, you keep repeating yourself for, for the past hour. Yeah, until you concede that your two points you mentioned... Is the base... So are you going to just ignore the fact that you brought up these two points and chant through that too? You brought up this... So I'm repeating what you brought up over and over again, Chikey. That's right, you brought them up, those two points that aren't curving and aren't a curved adjacent. But what are you going to tell me that I'm repeating myself? Yeah, I'm repeating what you said with the two points. Yeah, well... Yes, so you brought them up. And then I'm hammering you and proving that that proves a flat earth while you chant through me incessantly, non-stop. Yeah, you're proving a flat earth with those two points you brought up. Me repeating that you prove a flat earth with it isn't going to no. ever be the thing <laughs> not on the table. And no amount of chanting and fundy muting is going to change that you proved the flat earth. What's on screen now is what you're asked for, a curved adjacent, with the pink panther holding a set square with a curved line against a curved earth that will never give you an elevation angle. You said you could, you cited Euclid, you said you could have a curved adjacent, then you gave us two points. That's where we're at. Yeah, I'm repeating it. It's where you lost. I see. So you, you never learned Euclid. That's why... So I... we're going to go back to Euclid. I acknowledged it. I acknowledged it and asked you how you put it into practical application. So you circled, jerking, fundy, with your two points that we already got to after my acknowledgement of Euclid that you now circle jerking back to. Yeah, you got to the two points after Euclid. I've already conceded. We saw it. It was yesterday. Today is another day. Today we've got two points you were detailing. The baseline. Now you're denying a baseline. No, I didn't let you. I said you brought up the two points. That's where you lost. That's not a curved adjacent. That's a flat earth proof that you used with your two points. There's no yesterday for Euclid. It's too so the answer is there's no yesterday and back onto the circle jerk of Euclid. Yeah, the two points prove a flat earth. Back to Euclid. Circle jerk in fundy. Clutching at straws. Already been conceded and discussed. Don't need to go over this again. We just need to discuss the two points that aren't curbing, Chikey. That's where we're at. We've moved past Euclid. It's been conceded. What's been conceded? Uh, Euclid. You brought it up yesterday. And I said, yeah, yeah, notwithstanding your detailed description of Euclid, how would you put this into practical application? And then you asked specifically about a curved adjacent. You haven't provided it. You've provided two points. That's a flat earth proof. Like on screen here, for this elevation angle measurement to three stars, the two points would be the centre point out to the right angles. That's not curved adjacent. But that's how celestial navigation is done on a flat earth. You also confirmed that when you detailed the two points and then chanted through it every time I summarised your two points, like you've just done, you started chanting through me. Two points, your Where's point. The baseline? Yeah, that is the baseline. It's on screen now. What is it? What, what is it? Well, what is the ch point of chanting through me? Why well, don't acknowledge that they're your two points? Maybe go back to Euclid. You, you forget I'm in the show. I can't see what you show on screen. Yeah, a flat baseline, two points. Two points. What? Yeah, the, the two points you brought up, and we're not going to go away from because they prove a flat earth. So, so <laughs> the the line, the line for is a straight one. It's not curving. It's two points. That's right. It's not a bent curved adjacent. It's just two points. It's straight. It's the adjacent, the line to the star. Yeah, that'd be straight. Also, we're talking about a triangle. No, a baseline. Yeah, yeah. So on screen now, we've got three triangles. This is a different diagram with just three triangles for triangulation. And there's a straight line moving out to the right angle below the star along the baseline. That's our celestial navigation. This isn't curving. This isn't a curved baseline. It's what you said when you cited Euclid. We affirmed that you, Euclid citation's correct, but then we tried to get you to reference it to a line along the ground for celestial navigation, and you told us you could get a curved adjacent. You can't. Lots of chandy, uh, fundy muting ensued. That's where we're at. Euclid was really wrong. So back to the back to Euclid. Two points. That's where we're at. We moved past Euclid, but it seems now we're on the perpetual merry-go-round of I'm going to circle jerk back to something we've already conceded. Yeah, Euclid is is, is... yeah yeah going to be circle jerk back to at all costs. Yeah, I know. I'm just not letting you because we're at the two points past Euclid and curved adjacents past Euclid. We're already at the point where you haven't given us a curved adjacent. That's what you were asked for. Based on your citation with Euclid, notwithstanding. So we're already past Euclid. Maybe go back to Euclid for a fifth time. No, we, we don't pass Euclid. Oh, I see. So we do need to go back to Euclid when you're proving a flat earth with your two points. It's best to circle back to a point that we've already conceded rather than acknowledging the two points on a flat baseline as detailed in the last five diagrams that all have a flat baseline with two points not curving. Back I to Euclid, right? I don't care about your diagrams. I'm, I'm talking about the pure truth. 
the one that has actually a, a proofs to it. Well, that was meaningless drivel that didn't give us a curved baseline. Meaningless nonsense that didn't give us a curved adjacent. Meaningless nonsense that didn't give us a practical application of a curved adjacent in celestial navigation. That was meaningless tribe. It didn't mean anything. You saying that you've got actual proof and actual proof? You're just waffling nonsense. You have got absolutely nothing beyond your chanting and fundy muting, Jaiki. It's all you've got. Yeah, that, that's how the, the world looks to ignorant person. That's how it looks. The Sorry, this is from celestial navigation diagrams. These are from books that detail how you do celestial navigation so that you can save your life at sea if lost. It's got a flat baseline, same two points you detailed that you want to go back to Euclid over rather than address how you proved a flat earth. Well, you know, it doesn't need no no a, a base flat line. So that wasn't even a sentence. Yeah. So for all his chanting and talking through the top of me, that's what he actually had to offer. Wasn't even a concise, let alone coherent sentence proving or detailing anything because it didn't even make sense as a full sentence. That's what he's actually got to offer. But he thinks he, what he's got to say is so important that he needs to talk through the top of me nonstop. No, what he's actually done with the words we did hear and he wasn't muted over were him detailing the two points on screen now. This is about the seventh example. That proves Earth's flat. It's a flat baseline. It's not curved adjacent. Can't have a curved adjacent. It's nonsense. Well, you have two lines that you decided to draw the Earth flat below them. That's about it. Again, was that a coherent sentence? I will make a concise summary. Earth is flat. When measuring a baseline between you and 90 degree positions below stars that you're getting angles to, you require and is a prerequisite that Earth is measured and is flat. That is how it is navigated. See how that's a nice, concise summary of how Earth is flat? In Chaiki's example, although he claimed to be able to get curved adjacents, he didn't. He detailed two points. Eighth diagram that shows the two points, one below the concise summary I just gave of 90 degrees below a star and a line that is straight between you and the base, that is a flat earth proof. Now, like I say, Chaiki, who can't string together more than four words that are actually meaning anything because he can't string together a proper sentence, literally okay, chanted through well. every single word of that. So literally nobody in the Discord could hear anything I just said. Correct, Discord server? That's not you, Chaiki. There's else. nothing to hear. It sounds like background noise. Yeah, this this guy is out of his mind. He's a little crazy. So tread lightly, Nathan. This guy is the type to uh, end up on your doorstep. Very, very triggered. But did you hear my response or was from your perspective because obviously for my audience I can close down the discord line so that they can actually hear my concise summary of where he lost I'm asking from the discord server because that's not the case for you I assume you didn't hear a single word I said correct yeah it was audio chaos yeah so that's what Chaiki has succeeded in he succeeded in the discord server not hearing what I have refuted his claims with and he personally, every time he pipes up as I give him his flat earth proof of two points, will also start piping up when he's asked to address the flat earth proof he gave. Because he thinks that not hearing it will mean he doesn't have to address it. Like now when he does hear it, he will go totally silent. You watch. Won't give a concise rebuttal and tell us about the curved adjacent he didn't give us or address the flat earth proof he gave us. Yep. There's yep. that stone. Go on, Chucky. Mike's all yours. Mike is mine for how long? As long as it takes you to address the flat earth proof with the two points along the baseline and your failure to provide a curved adjacent. However long it takes you to address that. I never said two points along the baseline. Ban him. Said three Ban him. points. Ban him permanently. That's the third time I was hoping for the lie. Whoever's out there, permanently ban Chaiki like Rumpus and like Akumu virus. He is only here to lie.
We're specifically debating celestial navigation. When he loses because of his flat baseline, he says he wasn't claiming a baseline. Scum. That's what we deal with here. Scum. Deny the very premise that we're debating when you lose. I don't want him here anymore. Get lost, Chikey. You're never going to return. Like all the other scumbag liars who are given three opportunities to just rescind their lies, when you double down on it and triple down on it, you get lost. You don't come back. No. When we're specifically debating about celestial navigation and elevation angles, that's specific to baselines, and you tell us about a curved adjacent, that's your curved baseline, and fail to give it us, and then deny that you're even arguing about a baseline three times, that's when you never return. You're not worthy of conversation anymore. You're useless. All you're doing is creating audio chaos when you lose in the Discord server in the vain hope that that will be the audience's perspective of what you have to say or don't when you stutter and stammer. Now you can get lost permanently. I never want to see you here again, Chikey, because you're utter scum and you only obfuscate and you offer nothing. Nothing. But lies. That's what you actually offered here. Three occasions you had, three occasions you took the opportunity and lied. Scum. Chikey talking shitey. It's like bubbling of swamp gas, right? He's a swamp monster. You're blah, 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 stutter, 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 stutter. And I, I and I have a point. And it wasn't color commentary. He said in the middle of that, as he was funny muting you, that's the intent. So he admitted to why he's doing it. So the rebuttal can't be heard. No, the yes, you did. You I said that's the intent, Chiki. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was Chiki. No, that's fine. For some reason, like people don't understand what we're asking. Maybe I can ask it in another way. the The question is this: it's, it's not if I can, you know, you know, make an angle using my arms. Why MCA? That's not what we're talking about. The question is: How do you get a star's angular elevation above the Earth? if the earth is curving? That's the question. Why, MCA? <laughs> you don't, because you'd have to use a bubble, but that doesn't work on the ocean ever. And then, yeah, what are you going to do? Nothing. No, even with the bubble. You, what do you mean? You can't use a bubble on the ocean. That's the thing about the ocean. When you're on a ship, it moves. All well, the, the time. The, the bubble is establishing a horizontal as well. You're still getting an elevation angle. You're just using a bubble sexton instead. I don't know how that addressed what I said. Why don't you use a bubble on the ship? My point is my... that even if the Earth was a, bull, a bubble sextant wouldn't help you explore the oceans. Do you That's agree simple. with my sentiment? What is the point of debating with somebody who will deny the fundamental premise you are debating about, in this case, the baseline. He says the baseline can curve and then attempts to cite Euclid to prove that you can have a curved baseline. He's then challenged to actually put it into practical application. Fails and details how you'll do that two points straight line. He explicitly said straight line at one stage. Now, if I'm going to debate anybody and see it as a worthy endeavour, I have to know that the opponent, at some point, can concede their point if they lose, as opposed to fundamentally deny the premise of the debate itself when they lose. And in the interim process, chant through the top of every single word you say so that they don't have to address it. Do you think I'm unjustified in saying... Get lost forever, Chikey, you scum. No, it's no, fair you're enough. Totally justified. Compared with Rumpus, he is being belligerent and rumpusy, so I totally get it. And I mean, overall, he's been kind of a waste of time. Amusing to a certain degree until it becomes repetitive, but information wise, he's been quite useless. Next, next CIA shill scumbag who's going to do what Rumpus and every other CIA shill scumbag that comes here permanently wants to do. Who's next in line? There will be a Chikey replacement. You finally got there. Yes. <laughs> yes, Nathan. <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. CIA. <laughs> 
Well, there'll be another one, another wanker to come here and frustrate us and chant through us. Never concede a damn thing, but seems to have some form of loose argument vaguely along the lines of a heliocentrist that they can chant through us with permanently. Yeah, Chikey comes across as dumb, yet feels he can actually argue the worthy point that's the only one they should be debating and obfuscate it entirely. All right. Seems like a worthy endeavour if you're a shill. Right. Well, Nathan, I don't know. You're probably not in the mood for it, but I was actually going to attempt to try to do what Chikey couldn't do as Baldwin with the whole curved adjacent. I have a plan. It's going to get ridiculous, though. Okay. <laughs> right. So maybe you could have a curved adjacent if you basically take the two-step system of terrestrial refraction from apparent to geometric, right? So you can have an apparent straight baseline and then apply the geometry to it, right? The, the, the terrestrial refraction, all that, so that it would effectively be curved. Right in the geometry, but optically it would be straight, and that way you can use an optically straight baseline for for a geometric curve. I, I, I like your sentiment, Owen, and I like the fact that you consistently use the same form and structure that they use, which is to put the devastating undoing of their own argument right up front in the very first disclaimer that you say. <laughs> so, apparent straight line of sight, you say. Right, that was the first words out of his mouth, ladies and gentlemen. Arwin, at least true to form, will put the disclaimer of the failure of his claim right on the front cover. Uh, you don't have that, do you, though, Arwin? That was a quick no, 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 no. Look, the line of sight appears to be straight. But <laughs> no, it doesn't. Not in the ball <laughs> model. <laughs> Black Swan. No. No, 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 no. You don't get it. It appears to be straight, but geometrically it isn't. But then it isn't. No, no. The the idea is that um, it a it, it geometrically. Well, I don't even. The ray of light is curved, so it's not geometrically anything straight. No, no. Isn't no, that a cool geometry? Virus? Is, it is, is, yeah. it really is right. It's where it is on the ball, but optically, it's also subjected to terrestrial refraction, and that makes it all seem straight. That's what a cool virus is doing, right? It's apparently flat and straight, yeah, but, but geometrically you're calling... it's curved. Okay, yeah, 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 fine. Now I get where you're going. You're saying, in, in the same way as if you see the horizon too far on a ball with that assumption, you can say, well, it looks so refracted that it appears straight. Okay. Yeah, but you're still bending the line of sight at a rate of whatever over R. That's still curving. Now you're saying... So curving, it appears straight. No, no. You require a geometric straight line, though, don't you? So how it appears, regardless of the bent line, in actuality, appearing straight, like, look how curved it is. It's so curved, it looks flat. Yet that's still apparent, and I already covered this. It was the first thing you said. The apparent straight line. I just feel like yeah, I'm but, repeating myself. Look, hold on. I, I, I can justify this. Look, just because... You're you hold on because you're using a geometric process, right? With the sexton and all that, that's fine. And I realize that you're going to take it from an apparent geometry, not the actual geometry. But the point is, is that you can't use a non flat baseline, so just use the apparent flat baseline, and then you can basically graft it onto the actual geometry. It's doable, it'll work. Trust me. Just no. apply it, and it will work perfectly. In one circumstance, Eli, can you pop yourself on mute, please? Um, under one circumstance, when you've got infinite over 6R, then you can say that it's so bent it looks flat. Well, typically, you're not going to get that circumstance, ever, in fact. Ah, uh, let's see. How are you going to induce what BLMSB69 induced in terms of an infinite over 6R claim? Well, that's what you'd need if it's going to look so bent that it's flat. In apparent terms, you still haven't got a geometric straight line to make your maths work if you're going to claim that it's a ball derivative. 
because then you've got to have ball derivative maths in there. You still need a straight line, and you haven't got one. Third yes, time. I realize that, but look, we're all unfortunately subjected to the harsh truth that we can only measure things optically, and we'd have to then, after the fact of the measurement, apply the geometry to get the actual geometry, right? So where else can you take any measurement from? You like, already said that. You if we a can't take no, no. apparent you already measurement said. or stop. geometric stop, stop, stop. functions... Where can you ask the question? It's pointless. not rhetorical when you ask a question. Where can you get that from? You already disclaimed that what you're doing is a geometric measurement. So now you're turning the measurement into the conceptual aspect... And the conversion to spherical geometry is the physics or the reality. It's like, no, when you say geometry, that's not the geometry of a sphere with the conception of measuring an angle. You are actually doing a measurement with the sextant. And that measurement's off a flat baseline. Well, that baseline is flat. It's not apparently flat or geometrically curved, but seems flat in your vision. That makes no difference because you're going to convert to non-reality geometry after an actual measurement. Well, your geometric measurement was flat. So who cares what you do after after the fact? You've got to be, as was challenged by, or uh, challenged to, um, whatever his name is, I've forgotten his name already, the guy we just banned. Uh, he's got to give you a curved adjacent to achieve that. Not say, oh, I can just assume it's measured flat and then go forward with my flat earth measurement to imply that I've got spherical geometry after the fact. That's what you're doing. I know what you're doing. You're just elaborating I'm on sorry, it one step more I, each time. I have, to stop, I have to stop to interrupt right now because, I mean, <laughs> your hand wave dismissing my entire... You didn't prove that you can't take a, a geometric measurement from a parent situation in order to get a geometric result. You, you can. You, you, you can you and have you do. I did address it. You can and you do. And that measurement takes place in reality now you're saying the conversion to the apparent measurement goes to the actual geometry which for your argument i know is spherical for baldwin yes. right but it's the other way around in reality you're taking a geometric measurement and it is flat fifth time yeah, but you can't actually take a geometric measurement you because do. terrestrial refraction bends it all that's By the your problem assumption. You no. can only take an apparent measurement, not an actual geometric measurement. No, you're taking an actual angle measurement. In reality, it's in respect to the Earth. It is quite literally and figuratively geometric Earth measurement. Now, that's just an illusion. It just appears <laughs> oh, to be geometrically I flat. I gave up because you've gone beyond tedium. Oh, sorry. I win. See, this is what how I did like. Striking. What I did like was where you specifically disclaimed right at the point I gave the conclusion where the, the argument does actually end. That uh, this is where I need to start chanting. Yeah, absolutely spot on, Arwin. Yeah, I know how this works. <laughs> well, that was no fun. Oh. I mean, if you've got two GPs... It didn't take an hour of me continually waiting for you to start explaining so I could interrupt you with my stutters. Fair enough. You know? Well, you, you're funding me to one deck by accident. All right. I'm just saying, I can't understand that if you've got two GPs uh, at sea level at the same altitude, I mean, what what's not to understand? Oh, we're not talking about baselines? <laughs> Yeah, that got him banned, and rightfully so. I'm sick of it. These people like Chikey. They start off all friendly, and they're just here to you know, talk about shoot the breeze, be friendly, until it comes down to them offering up flat earth proof, and then they want to fundy mute and chant through you and deny the premise of their own debate. Absolutely outrageous. Yeah, next, next CIA show. That, that, um, that happened yesterday. There's this guy that uh, everybody said was so cool and this, that, and the third. And so I asked him if he wanted to have a conversation about Flat Earth. And so there's this video that explains that the horizon is geometric, basically, um, from brain stuff. 
uh, if you type in distance to horizon on YouTube, brain stuff pops up and this guy explains the distance to the horizon. And then if you Google distance to horizon formula, basically his argument is from that formula. So I asked the guy, what is it about this that you don't understand specifically? And he refused to answer the question to the point that he starts cursing me out. And it only took like three minutes. Everybody's talking to him, asking him questions that are insignificant to, you know, the actual reason we're all there in a flat earth server. And I just asked him, okay, so we took like a, a, a fifth grade level guy who's explaining the distance to the horizon. You already understand that we're saying that there's no such thing. And I'm asking you what about it you don't understand because you're saying you don't understand it. And he starts cursing me out. Thought you were nice. Yeah, because you've <laughs> overcome his argument. Suddenly, you know, being nice isn't priority. Well, thank you. You've really ruined the conversation with that, Eli. <laughs> That's <laughs> Um, no, actually, it brings attention to the 1.22. It brings attention to the black swan. So that's why he cursed you out. Maybe. Well, how could it not be? He destroyed the ball earth with a geometric horizon. He's got nothing to defend. But he killed the ball earth. And I don't know what happened with Chike. I had to go do something, but uh, I put a bunch of slides for the the panel and you to see. They're never referencing a curved surface. It's everything is to the rational horizon, which is the celestial horizon, which is the equatorial plane. And what's the definition of a plane? It's not curved. It, it's, these people have been hoodwinked by the system. We're trying to let them know they're upset that they could be lied to all these years, so they defended with vigor, only to fail at every point of debate. Because all we do is get the citations and the official claims, and it doesn't stack up. Yeah, gone are the days of the normies. The normies coming in and having a, a, a normal discussion and actually conceding things. I remember. Yeah, they either go on. They either avoid talking to you when they realize you're educated to debate it, like we experience, or they pick on someone who just recently came across flat earth debate or flat earth proofs and you know, maybe it's their first month or four months into it, and they win that optically, but not <laughs> by proof. And then that that guy or gal educates themselves over a year's time and says, hey, I want to have that discussion again that you thought you won. And then they're going to curse at you because they never won it in the first place. And it took time for the person to get educated on how to debate it. And it's like the normies, they're in different classifications. You got a normie who'll fight you. You got a normie who'll say, thanks, I'll investigate. And you got everything in between that. So people are not always the same cut. And it's, you know, just make sure what you're disseminating is the truth and don't worry about the results. Indeedy. It's been a great show, by the way. I am going to miss Jaiki, though. Really? I want to know who's next. Nathan, Nathan asks, who's next? Who's next? And I mean, I only miss Jaiki for that much, right? I mean, it's great to have him back, but 
after like a couple of hours combined, yeah, you get sick of him again. It's like, uh, just like go away for half a year or something. <laughs> Who was Harvard. the other guy that was with Chaiki? Who was the other guy that was there? Always- Ed. Pickle Rick. Uh, yeah, Ed Freeze. <laughs> and Pickle Rick, yeah. Pickle no, Rick. I, I walked away because I got tired. He's just trolling us. He brings nothing to the debate. And Nathan, I know what you were doing, so you got it. And I'm glad he's out because he's just wasting our time. He should waste your time. Wasting our time, though. He no, I know that. Before got it too. No, I know that. But this is so belligerent uh, at this point. So it's to the point where we are are not going to get stuck at the bottom of the barrel with the chikes of that side of the argument. We're going to, you know, put up or shut up. We're not going to let you keep us there. We're we're going after the guy today in the video who sees. Jenga problems with cosmology. That's who we're after. Their own people who see a problem but can't get out of the narrative they bought into. The framework. <laughs> That's interesting, that word framework and background. Sound familiar? Yeah. I use framework all the time as a word. Yeah, that's different. They, they're they saying that we sound like ballers. Meanwhile, the other side sounds like ballers. What they mean is a framework of reasoning. That's n- basically, for them, can be both math and physical knowledge, right? So they just mix it up. And they see it as a framework. It's like, this is a structure of logic and things that we assume work this way. Yeah. Makes Nathan, sense. I put, Nathan, I put a screenshot earlier with the two pictures from that guy's video. Can you put up the, the Jenga Tower one? Yes, in a minute. Hey, everyone. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. I was just going to bring you up, Brian. You just came in? Just there, yeah. Oh, man, you missed it. George Musa was here. Is serious? No, I'm, I'm lying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the thing is, I get excited about this. I mean, that shouldn't excite me. It shouldn't. It it did. Did. No, <laughs> it was like we're, someone we're else was here. Like, yeah, yeah, it was just chiky. No, it's it's. <laughs> you, know, you can no. think of it as George Mooser, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can take him, the George Mooser. I was going to bring you up and say, did anybody hear Brian and Witsit? Because that was outstanding. Yeah, it was good. You did well. I listened to it on yeah, QE. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Uh, it, it, yeah. it, 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 if you listen past that part, because I, mean, I don't know how far in QE got, but I think it was only about half an hour, maybe a bit more. Uh, but things got worse after that. When I say worse, I mean, I ended up telling the moderator to shut up, basically. What moderator? Well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hammer, I don't know what's going on with him. That was not moderation. And uh, I noticed in the chat, people were going against you. Even in the chat yesterday, in Nathan's show, they were bringing up um, the debate, and they said you were acting like an asshole. They yeah, said they that's... have no clue why this was taking place and why that was done. You were holding him to task on everything he said. He said something about flat of debate, go get us some proof. Because the other day you spoke for five minutes uninterrupted. Yeah, to say, yeah, I didn't see yesterday's Nathan's chat yesterday, but uh, I did look at the chat after I was after being in the debate. I went back later on and looked at the chat. And there's a, look, people, are, I have to say it, there's some load of stupid flat earth or something. That's it. I mean, uh, there's a reason why we exist and why we're a small group, with the exception of, when I say small, we have obviously people that follow us and that uh, follow this show and QEs. So they understand. But there's a load of other people out there and they just don't get it. I mean, they were hoodwinked by that. They were, they, like, I have to hand it to Austin. He hoodwinked them. I have to say, yeah, you did a good job there because no matter how calm I was, no matter what I did, like he looked like he was the good guy. You know, <laughs> I, that's the thing. When, when people think you're the bad guy, nobody wants to hear what you have to say. 
Yeah, we're looking at it because we know what's going on. So we're not seeing that. But you're saying these dummies are seeing it the way Wixit's spinning it because they're just stupid. Yeah, it's, they're easily fooled. Like, they are the people who end up voting the wrong way, believing the wrong things. These are those people. And they probably think that they have discernment because they're a flat outer. No, being a flat outer doesn't mean that you've not you've stopped being stupid. You mean no. useless idiots? Like well, the, yeah. Uh... Uh, well, I think I think not being stupid is a daily responsibility. Some people become flat earthers and then just give up that responsibility. Uh, I don't know what to say. I, there were some people disappointed me because I was looking at the chat going, uh, 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 like some people they didn't know at all. They were obviously just on which side. They, that, that didn't matter. But there was other people who disappointed me. It was kind of going, what does that comment mean? I mean, if you were listening, you could hear what's going on there. You know, oh, all he was doing was attacking Nathan and QE, you know. That's all it, like, it was. And I knew why he was doing it, because he didn't want to get into the, into the, into the details. He, he wanted to, and he did a good job of it. He wanted to portray himself as the victim. And the audience ended up. He's trying. He's doing exactly what the ballers do, and I have these conversations. And you start mentioning the lights in the sky, and as soon as you do that, I bring them back down to earth and say we're talking about the geometry of Earth and the measurement of the Earth curve. Got fuck all to do with the lights in the sky, and that's all he's talking about: lights in the sky. It's got to do with the shape of the Earth. Fuck all. You're ignoring uh, the measurements. Yes. I'm sorry, Tim. No, that's all right. I'm back. I had to step out. Did you put up that slide, or are you not done? Uh, I haven't, but I can. Go ahead. Go ahead. If you can make your point, I'll, I'll bring it up. Yeah, it's the, it's the Jenga slide. Well, the first one was the other one, which was, uh, let's see, he's got it labeled. The cosmic scale, the actual scale of the observable universe depends on how we interpret and understand light and the theoretical model not scientific theory, but theoretical model, we use to measure it from here, okay? <laughs> so you got that slide. But the next one is the, the biggie. The structure of the standard model of cosmology. A block fails if any of its supporting blocks fails. So as QE pointed out, you got mechanics, optics, Nucleosynthesis, redshift velocity, Newtonian gravity, relativity behind that, general relativity, supernova, dark matter, Hubble law, Big Bang cosmology, evolution, CMB structure, universal expansion, CDM background, standard model of cosmology, dark energy inflation. Now, Newtonian gravity has failed. Even, it, Newton didn't even want it to succeed. What happens to the rest of the blocks that they're building off of that one? They, they, the guy even admitted they had to have something to explain something else, so they invented dark matter. And as we know, evolution, what's that? No one's ever seen it. I mean, this whole, and Big Bang, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the world believes and the Jenga towers fell down today based on this guy and he's in the system himself at least he recognizes it oh yeah he's got doubts Uh, Paula put a good one. We should call it Jenga cosmology from moving forward. Um, yeah, the Jenga cosmology is what we got to call their, their version from now on. But that's what it is, though. Yeah, we got a video of the site. Hi, guys. <clears throat> good morning. Morning. I got something for you guys. 
Go on, I got a present. What's that? Nathan, remember me? <laughs> You're only here yesterday. <laughs> yeah, we had a good conversation until you called me an idiot. So I said, oh, we'll do this next time. I don't want to be called names. But I just posted a picture in the text chat. Okay. Right. So when you stand on the equator, uh, Polaris is on the horizon. It's basically at zero, right? That's what the equator is. Yeah, so uh, my uh, little fake drawing shows why that doesn't make sense if the Earth was flat. So you're saying the minimum but, elevation angle measurement to Polaris doesn't work on a flat Earth? That's what I'm saying. It's a minimum elevation Elev angle. You, you understand that it's the minimum angle off a flat baseline to Polaris? Hear me? Try that again. You understand that you're to, you're detailing the minimal minimum measurable angle to Polaris. That's an angle measurement off a flat yeah. baseline. The elevation angle measurement minimum that you have detailed would prove Earth is being measured flat to get that angle. But the elevation angle doesn't comport to a flat plane. Do you want to explain how you can get an elevation angle measurement from a curved baseline, please? Ask him to define it first. Uh, at the measure the measurement of an elevation angle, you you, you can do it at any altitude. Uh, that's not what I asked. I asked how you could get a cu curved baseline to give you an elevation angle. <laughs> there is no curve. There is no curved baseline. So it's flat. <laughs> yeah, horizontal is yeah, no so flat then. In the yeah, so flat then. From, from so the so this course. so yeah. this flat Earth angle measurement isn't possible on a flat Earth according to you. Fourth time, the ground isn't the horizontal. Oh, so you the, do this so at any the, altitude. the ground. So you mean the baseline? No, the ground is not the baseline. Yeah, it is. You're talking about an elevation angle measurement to Polaris. It has a baseline. That minimum angle, the first line for that angle is a baseline. Clearly, you don't understand what you're talking about. Oh, come you on. You just denied that's the baseline. Was, Sorry, guys, I don't need help I... from G+. <laughs> you just denied the baseline and said it wasn't that's the ground. what I was trying to... Sorry, I I'm still contradicting you. You don't need to talk while I contradict what you just said. I'm just repeating it. You said it's not the baseline, not Drop the ground. Yes, it's the third time you've talked through me. You're doing the chikey trick where when I annihilate your garbage point by pointing out you just keep talking through the conclusion at the end of the conclusion, right? I'll make my fourth attempt. You said it's not the ground, it's not the baseline. It is the ground because you can have a ground position of Polaris. It can be used as a navigation star. Its ground position is on that baseline. And the baseline is the ground. So wrong on both counts. Okay. Uh, I still have wrong on both counts. Not okay. Just need you to understand that you are wrong on both of those counts. Number one, this minimum elevation angle measurement off a flat earth baseline, which is what it is, doesn't not work on a flat earth. That's utterly absurd. Do you want to just concede that this minimum flat earth elevation angle measurement that is the ground, that is the baseline, that is flat... We'll definitely work on a flat Earth. It's the only way it can work. It's the only way you'll measure this angle. Do you want to just concede that first? Uh, yeah, we can agree uh, if the if the baseline is the ground. We could just disagree. I'm more concerned with uh, the, so, the elevation. So, so we agree. So, sorry, if we agree. Equation. Sorry, if. What do you mean if? It's got ground positions. If we're navigating I using a, these stars, I have a specific my question, bad. Nathan, and you're rumpusting me away from it. You're obfuscating. But you said if it's the ground, I'm repeating what you said, clarifying it, and then disagreeing with it. How can that possibly be obfuscation? You total asshole! I did not say horizontal. Shut up! 
I'm not obfuscating you. I'm addressing you, stupid tard. Now, if you want to bugger off because you've lost at this point oh, again... you can't do this? You, you can't handle this? You can run away, if you like, while I take apart your stupid claim that it's not the ground. And if it is... No, it is. It absolutely is. No, it's not an if I'm statement. I'm really uh, Are you, you chanting through me? me? Are you chanting through me? Well, you don't stop talking. When uh, is this a back and forth, or are you just going to do that? Is this the same tactic that Chaiki used? Have we got a new CIA agent in place? Yeah. <laughs> Asshole! I'm refuting your claim when you say if it's the ground. No, it is. It's not. So when we're detailing the ground position of Polaris, and it's not a reference. Sorry, to the is ground? that you? Is that you? Fundy muting me? Never. So it is the ground. If we're dealing with the ground position of Polaris, that's how it could be practically applied to find your way, using it as a navigation star. Hey, Callie, how do you establish your vertical? I don't need any help. I don't need any help. That silence was perfectly sufficient. So we're dealing with a flat earth and a flat baseline. It is the ground. It's going to have ground positions on that line that is flat and not curved and the only way to make your argument that this flat earth angle isn't possible on a flat earth that's crap i need you to concede how crap okay. your argument was not chant through the top of okay. the conclusion not chant through the top of the conclusion i'll try again without the interruption from a fundamentalist religious zealot cia agent who needs to mute the conclusion that your argument failed because you asked me how a flat earth elevation angle measurement would be possible on a flat earth. That's utterly absurd and a useless argument, Cully. Okay. Not okay. You've just wasted a significant period of our time with your crap argument that only works on a flat earth. So did you think you'd got a gotcha when you asked me how a flat earth angle would work on a flat earth? You afraid of me? Sorry, are you afraid of answering how you perceived a win by asking me how a flat earth angle works on a flat earth? Was that a perceived win You're to you? You're dodging me. You're dodging this. Is, is anybody in the G panel following along with his responses? I ask him how a perceived win can be taken from asking somebody how a flat earth angle can be measured on a flat earth, and he's asking me if I'm dodging it? That makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm directly addressing it. Your stupid nonsense that fails and could only work on a flat earth. I'm not obfuscating. I'm directly addressing. Can I get a level line of sight at any altitude? What, what, what about your elevation angle measurement to Polaris that only works on a flat earth? I was trying to answer your question. Yeah, but you, you just need to answer it by saying you understand that an elevation angle measurement only possible on a flat earth definitely works on a flat earth to conclude your question you asked you know circle of equal altitude so are you going to go on two circles of equal elevation that would also be a flat earth proof because they're equal elevation and not curving away no we're not going on to a different subject you will concede that your question about an elevation angle measurement that's only possible on a flat earth to polaris would be ludicrous to be questioned about whether or not it'd be working on a flat earth it can only be taken from a flat earth that's where we're at i just need you to concede that not constantly change the subject, not circles of equal elevation. You and your question. Oh. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, what? Come on, what? I am not going to concede that this flat earth angle could only work on a flat earth. I'm asking how it would work on a flat earth, this flat earth angle. Right? Really padding. Excuse me? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't quite hear you because I was talking when you decided to fundy mute the top of what I was saying. My bad. You want to try saying it not through the top of me? Oh, you're done. Right, so circle of equal altitude. Sorry, no, I wasn't done. I was waiting for a concession from you about the flat earth only elevation angle measurement to Polaris you asked about. You asked how it could work on a flat earth, and I pointed out that it could only work on a flat earth. You haven't conceded it. Like with Chaiki, we're not going anywhere until you, the fundamentalist religious zealot with a ball belief, who's asking me how a flat earth angle that could only be measured on a flat earth with an elevation angle measurement off a flat baseline could work on a flat earth. I need you to concede that's a stupid question because it could only work on a flat earth. I need you to understand that before we move on. 
to circles of equal elevation that also only work on a flat Earth. If anyone cares to logically assess how celestial... Right, do, do you need to start appealing to my audience rather than answering about your stupid question about angles that only work on a flat Earth? You need to change the subject, do you, coward? Carly, you seem to be a coward like Chikey. <laughs> you can laugh about it or concede that asking me how a flat Earth angle could work on a flat Earth is stupid, Carly. Where you lost, in other words. Concede your loss. Your stupid question that was failing this, from the outset. This is disingenuous, Nathan. Sorry, how is it disingenuous to point out that you asked me how a flat Earth angle can work on a flat Earth and I point out that it's a flat Earth only angle? That's disingenuous, is it, scumbag? Flat Earth only angle? Yes, it's an angle off a flat baseline, as I've explained to you on multiple occasions. The flat baseline. It's not a curved adjacent. It's flat. It's the ground. It's going to have ground positions on it. Polaris can be used for navigation, I explained to you. While I did, you chanted continually through me Point. like you are doing now. Chanting through me rather than listening to how it could only be a flat earth angle. That's right. That is what we were discussing. You just haven't conceded it. I don't want to talk through you, you know. I, I just want a little more space to be able to respond to what you say. Uh... Yeah, so a horizontal, you can establish at any altitude, right? No reference to the ground. Well, that's not curving. So establishing horizontals isn't going to be very useful for you if you've got a ground that's curving away at 8 inches per mile squared. So we're going to go into how we prove a flat Earth, are we? You're a flat Earth proving a flat Earth, right? I'm just saying a level line of sight can be horizontal without a reference to the ground. Is that fact? When that's your lines of sight on a that. globe Earth are always bent, I'm going to go with no, because black swan... You don't have any straight lines of sight ever to anything on a globe. So, no. I, I'm pretty bad. sure that you're now chanting through me. I just prefer a clear <laughs> airwaves, a clear of fundamentalist religious zealots with a bull belief, chanting through the top of me, repeating what I repeated to them yesterday when I called you stupid because you clearly didn't understand it. You've repeated again that you've got a straight line of sight because you're fundamentally retarded and didn't listen yesterday like you're not listening now. So... No, you don't well, have don't a line of sight. Uh, uh, excuse me, I, that would be me wanting the on. clear airwaves. That would be me from the idiot who thinks he needs to chant through me. The idiot. Do you want to run away, idiot? You don't seem to understand that on a globe you don't have a straight line, idiot. Did you want to blame You're being not... called an idiot and chant through me, pointing out how it's idiotic to say you've got a straight line when it's not no atmo day on a globe, like I explained yesterday? Idiot. Now, there idiot, be... you can chant through me, idiot, but I'm still going to be calling you an idiot because it's idiotic to say you've got a straight line of sight on a globe. You haven't. No amount of fun demuting is going to change your lack of line of sight being straight. Chant all you like. You haven't got a straight line of sight. Like I said yesterday, you idiot. Now you can run if you okay. want. Bla blame me calling you an idiot. Run away. Idiot. Hey, I, I don't think you're an idiot. Ah! stuttering you are an idiot stutterer you're stuttering because you haven't got a comeback all you've got is your idiocy asking us how flat earth angles work on a flat earth and telling us about straight lines of sight you don't have on a globe like you did yesterday because you're an idiot and you don't listen idiots can't listen they chant when they should listen like you're doing now chanting the difference between rather than listening rather than listening and being educated on your own idiocy you're chanting through me no, idiot. I'm trying to have a back You can try. You can try and listen, idiot. I, yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> you could. You just have to shut your mouth. You, you're incapable because you're an idiot. That wouldn't make it a back and forth. Pause. Pauses for silence. Points out that the opponent's an idiot and gets immediately chanted through. So when you tell me that I just need to pause for a gap, it's so that I can pause for a gap, start talking, and you can do the same straight through the top of me. Is that a reasonable way of back and forthing when you're pointing out that we can't get an elevation angle measurement from a flat Earth when it can only be measured by Earth being flat? The elevation angles we see in re reality, the observed phenomena, do not comport with a flat plane. Sorry, what observed phenomena of an elevation angle measurement? That's not a phenomenon. We're not going to science this, you complete clown. That's not science. That's a measurement. What a clown. Doesn't seem to understand that he's in a category error when he tells us about the observed phenomena of a sextant measurement. What an idiot. You don't understand science. That's not a phenomena, you bonehead. You I know idiot. there's at least... You stupid fool. You complete clown. You numpty. You moron. You idiot. That's not a phenomena, you idiot. 
How do you like being called an idiot? Maybe blame why you now run away like a coward, as I point out the idiocy of calling a measurement through a sextant a phenomena. No, it's not a phenomena. You're just an idiot, Carly. Idiot. Did you hear me, idiot? You can run uh, away now, idiot. Blame me calling so you, you an did. idiot. While I demonstrate that calling a phenomena a measurement through a sextant is idiotic. That's you, the idiot. Do you want me to go away, Nathan? Like... I don't give a shit what you do. You've come to me, haven't you, Carly? You've come to me to prove a flat earth and ask how you can get this measurement of a flat earth off a flat earth? That's what you've come here to do because you're an idiot with a crap argument that failed and you refused to concede and then start telling me about straight lines of sight that you don't have on a globe? You don't have them. Told you yesterday. You're an idiot. You've also so got you short don't memory. believe in a straight line of sight? You don't have one on a globe. What is it? No Atmo Day? I mean, all of your fundy religious zealots have been telling us for three straight years that it's always a bent line of sight, my friend. So you don't have one. Fifth time. Told you yesterday. Because you're an idiot, you don't listen. Did you even look at the drawing? I don't need to. It's not No Atmo Day. No, you didn't. You don't even know what I'm referring to right now. Right, you're referring to... No Atmo Day straight lines. You don't have a straight line on a globe. I have addressed this. You don't have one. I told you yesterday, idiot. Now, yesterday, apparently, you ran away because you didn't like being called an idiot. I've called you an idiot 27 times and you're still here. So I'm guessing that your objection yesterday to being called an idiot was a lie. Because you are an idiot and I'm calling you one now, idiot. And you're still here. So your lie about that being an objectionable position was a lie. Because you are an idiot and I'm calling you one. Care to address the topic? What about you not having a straight line of sight that you detailed a moment ago when you verbally exampled a straight line of sight that I explained yesterday you don't have? What is it? No Atmo Day? I, Do you I, want to answer me? Is it no Atmo Day? That's a non-rhetorical question with a yes or no answer. Is it no Atmo Day? Oh, wow, man. Is it no Atmo Day? Are you scared? Are you obfuscating? Did somebody... Sorry, is it no Atmo Day? It's a simple yes or no question. I think this is obfuscation. Projection, maybe. Were you projecting your own obfuscation onto me? Well, you can't answer a simple yes or no question about your claim. Is it no Atmo Day for your straight line of sight? <clears throat> That'll be a no. It's not no Atmo Day, and you clearing your throat isn't really a very good answer to my question about your straight line of sight that you don't have, because it isn't no Atmo Day, my friend. Care to address it? That's not that's not a real thing. No Atmo Day is not real. Flat that's right. So you haven't got a straight line of sight. So according to your globe model, always bent, never straight. So your argument falls on its arse immediately. You're not interested in having a real conversation. Sorry, is that the rebuttal that I'm not interested? I was very interested. I listened to you ask me about a straight line of sight and pointed out that it's not no Atmo Day. You confirmed no Atmo Day is not a thing. What, so always atmosphere, sphere-shaped air bending the light always? Well, it's definitely never straight then. That's me paying particular attention to this conversation, not, not being interested as you've lied about. I'm very interested and I've annihilated your position, Carly. Like ripped it through your own asshole. For an audience. You're That's what I've done. It's not me not being interested. It's me detailing our one and you chanting straight through the top of me and me having to close your line because I'm still in the middle of the same sentence that you're interrupting. You never stop talking. When do I when do I get to respond? When do you when do you have something interesting to say? So far you've asked me how flat earth angles work on a flat earth. They only work on a flat earth. And then you went on to asking me about straight lines you don't have on a sphere. Right. Sir, yeah, right. altitudes on the equator. The equator, the minimum elevation yep. angle measurement of a flat Earth to Polaris. That's a flat Earth proof. Cat got your oh, tongue? Man. Maybe you're not getting enough time to talk. That would be repeated by me because he didn't respond. Now I repeat it and there's a good chance he'll start talking through the repetition that he didn't respond to in the dead air he left. Yeah, so that's a flat Earth proof that you've just named, my friend. That's a minimum elevation angle measurement to Polaris off a flat plane. Look at my drawing in main chat. Sorry, is that you not addressing the minimum elevation angle measurement to Polaris off a flat plane and waving a picture I haven't looked at? Yeah, you're not looking at the picture. I don't need then. to. You're detailing flat earth proof after flat earth proof with the minimum elevation angle measurement to Polaris. It's flat earth proof. Literally, anybody who wishes to investigate celestial navigation, they realize that it doesn't work on a flat plane. You just look at the picture. Is this the guy yesterday who didn't know what the dip question was? Correct. 
Because doesn't yeah, know what a pet. I do yeah. know what a picture uh, is. Man. What the heck? Oh, do you? He doesn't know what a picture is. First of all, he didn't post a picture. It's a diagram. He's a retard. Oh, well, so what, what, could what, I, could what, what is the what is the baseline? <laughs> Y'all are nervous. Reference to something. Or, yeah. hold, could I have him detail? Do, do, the... do you need to poison the well of my audience by telling them that we're nervous of you, that we're scared of you, that we're obfuscating you? Yeah, you're poisoning the well fallacies. Just going to get pointed out by me every time you use it. And again, like always, you attempting to chant and fundy mute me pointing out you're poisoning the well fallacy while you attempt to infer that we're somehow scared of your crap arguments. We're not scared. I'm actually calling you an idiot and giving examples of your idiocy. That's not fear, you total clown. So no, don't poison my audience by telling them that we're fearful of you. We're definitely not. Let's get that absolutely clear. That's a fallacy he's employed. It's called a poisoning the well fallacy. It won't work here. Um, what? Yeah, the, you, you misconceptualized what the basic argument. One second, now, I failed Arwen, to see the argument. Hang on, one second. Arwen, uh, sorry. Could this go detail the dip correction for us, please? Yeah, it's the angular difference between eye level and the horizon line. No, that's um, incorrect. That's incorrect. That's a consequence of the dip correction. What is the correction for? What is being corrected for? The difference between, I just said it. You want me to repeat no, myself you, because you, it just goes no, against just, what- No, no, the, pro the problem for the audience's benefit was while Brian was talking, the closed line to Discord didn't allow his obfuscation of Brian's point being obfuscated by him. So the audience got to hear what Brian said, but like That's he's stupid, doing now, yeah. he's intentionally talking straight through what's being concluded so that he can you're claim like a that he hasn't heard it. So do you hear that? That's me opening the line while he's chanting straight through what I say. That's what he did to Brian. So it seems like he hasn't even been asked the question because he wasn't, because he talked through it. You don't know what a baseline really is. And now he's going to reaffirm his poisoning the well fallacy straight through the top of it, ignoring Brian's point. So subverting Brian's point that he hasn't listened to because he chanted through it. Do you want to try up, again, Brian? Brian? I would suggest, given my here? experience, Brian, that this will take about 65 attempts with him obfuscating every attempt, like he's doing now, talking straight through the top of me, of you actually making the point to him. As long as he doesn't hear it because he talks through it, he won't have to address it. You right? are unproductive. As See, now he's telling us how unproductive we are while we point out his tactic to the audience. Yeah, you have tactics. Yeah, You're unproductive. You're really bad. No, I'm pointing out your tactics. That while Brian asked you a question, so that the question wasn't heard, you chanted through the top of it, yeah. and you're still doing it now to me while I point out the audience your tactic. That was a no, waste I'll of time. Him again, Nathan. Because of you. You won't, you won't get Harry. a chance. He won't allow it, Brian. Well, it'll be good for the audience up, to see him not being, not being able to detail the diff correction and not understanding it. Because with his original claim today that... Uh, what flat earth elevation angles don't work on a flat earth okay Callie what is the correction for you gave me a consequence of the of the correction what has been corrected for please answer. the height of the section isn't establishing a horizontal you can get a horizontal please. when you establish a level line of sight what is the correction correcting for I'll ask you again what is the correction the angle between for? you don't know do you? yeah I'm asking I said it already, the angle between eye level and the horizon. That's incorrect. That's a consequence. I say it's it again, not. a consequence. It is a consequence of the dip correction, if you do it that way. The point is, is that you don't know what the dip correction is correcting for. You think, you think the line that goes to the horizon and then up to your eye line. You think that's the correction. Because the height of the section don't doesn't you? give you an elevation angle. It just gives you the height of the section. <clears throat> So what is the correction for? What are you correcting for? You subtract the dip angle from the height of the section and you get the elevation angle. What are you correcting <laughs> for? I didn't ask you. You don't know what the thing. You haven't got a clue. Yeah, you don't know how to do celestial navigation. You yet. don't know what the dip correction is. You're coming in here talking big and you don't know what you're talking about. If anybody actually cares about celestial navigation... Oh, no, no, he's pointing out that you don't know what dip correction is, and now you're going to give us some platitude about what we don't know and appeal to the audience about what they know. No, 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 Brian's humiliating you, and this little segue non sequitur just won't make it to the audience until you address what Brian said. I'll just let him readdress it and have you ignore it. You don't understand what dip correction's for or how it's done. It's clear.
Yeah, yeah he's, he's giving skip. the audience uh, a consequence of the dip correction. If you if you do it that way, that is a consequence of the dip correction. But the correction, he doesn't know what you're correcting for. He doesn't know, oh, he know does. what that paragraph is for. Well, he doesn't know what it is. He just think, he thinks because he's a global, because someone hoodwinked him into believing that you're just bringing the line from the oil that starts to go to the horizon up to the oil line. But you're, that's not, that's not what I said. That's the con that is that is what you said. It's the angular difference between the horizon and the oil line. That's what you said. A level line of say. What's the correction? What are you correcting for? You're establishing horizontal with the level line I of sight. Ask you what you're doing. And then I the dip you angle is for. the angular difference between the horizon and the level line of sight. Incorrect. Yeah. Incorrect. Re for about the tank time. That's not incorrect. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, we don't need you it's to totally state, incorrect. We don't need you to declare that it isn't. Uh, I don't need you, you to just be very wrong and interrupt me all the time. It's weird. Oh, Nathan. we got another interruption, guy. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Well, can it, Nathan, well, I mean, do you have anything them? to cite to to validate your answer? I'm sure Brian could obviously give us a citation for his. Is that possible? Well, we already established he doesn't know what it is. I have a citation in Discord at 48 minutes after the hour. Are you looking at live stream? I know, Eli I know Elijah gives a fuck about the truth. I just posted you know, for Are you looking at live stream in... Discord. I put it in there at 48 <laughs> minutes after the hour. Can you focus? Y'all all sound like you're fucking... No need to tell us what we sound oh like. We need God, to know if you so... can see the citation that's been posted by QE as opposed to you telling the audience what we are. No, you don't need to do that. You just need to tell us whether or not you can see that citation there and then hopefully you can read it out for us so you can understand what the dip correction is. We've told you you're wrong about. Now we've provided you citation. Can you see it or not? He rage quit and ran. Of course he did. Oh, well, it must have been because I was calling him an idiot. Well, let's just go over the citation. Dip angle from Celestial Navigation, the Mariner's Handbook, International Correspondence, Schools of Scranton, PA. Oh, they're homeboys. Since the value of dip depends on what Brian was looking for, height of the eye above the surface of the sea it is advisable always to ascertain beforehand the exact vertical distance from the waterline to the bridge or other place occupied by the observer when measuring altitudes. Due allowance should be made for any reduction or increase in this vertical distance when the ship is loaded or light or when it has a considerable list to either side. End of citation. How many times did it say the word horizon? None. <laughs> Sorry, did you say none? Yes. Zero. It had a zero reference when detailing height of eye correction. To the, it didn't mention it once. Sorry, where's the guy who ran away? Oh, my bad. It's we don't know anything about celestial navigation. While well, we're trying to point out how wrong he is. And then he runs away like an abject coward. No, my friend, we just read out a citation in terms of height or eye correction. It's the height above the surface of the sea. It didn't mention horizon once. You mentioned it multiple times because you are... What's that word? Idiot! Yeah, you're trying to say it's an angle, but all it's doing is the height of eye, it just adjusts your, uh, uh, you know, your, your first elevation angle. That's all it does. Brings you down to sea level for your apparent altitude then after that you'll do your refraction and you get a true altitude these guys are fucking retards well they don't want to admit that they're like looking him. at the horizon like the they're coach. running from the fact that it's the ground and the surface that's why he's saying apparent horizon so there's some distance above the actual horizon that he's claiming that he's looking at and establishing horizontal off of that and if that's true then he needs a secondary dip to correct for it on that end just like he does for the height of the sextant or observer, whatever you want to call it. But he's going to run from that correlation of the surface is what you're standing on, and that is extended out to the horizon that you're looking at. And he hasn't got a straight line to it. Yeah. I mean, for, for some reason, we managed to get our way. I wasn't going to let him pass that. I mean, fair enough, Brian. You want it, you do want to have this, hence I let you. But I wasn't going to let him go there. No! What straight line? Do you think we're going to let yeah. you get past it? Three straight years of being told that we've got atmosphere bending every line always. 
Well, that's it. That's the end of your argument. You think I'm going to get back into the oh. wrangle dangle about dip correction when you haven't got a straight line? Absolutely not. Uh, Brian, uh, that's Bri Brian, that's Brian's agenda. He's always got to shift at the dip angle, Craig. That's just what he does, right? You got to cut yeah. him some slack. It kills them, but it could be killed a lot earlier. Yeah, see, uh, I would go, uh, yeah, I would just go straight. Uh, yeah, QB is 100% correct. I just go straight to dip correction. Uh, because as soon as he details dip correction correctly, if he can, most of them, I mean, most of them can't. They actually don't know, understand the dip correction is the height of height above the water underneath the boat. They don't understand that. So, but as soon as they detail that correctly, then logically, there's no way that the horizon that they've just tried to beg the question with can have anything to do with a globe. <laughs> now, their horizon won't work anyway because it's constantly refracted. <laughs> so you won't. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah. have uh, you can't have it, that you can't have it's constantly a married bachelor. I'm sorry, you can't do that. Exactly. Why do you think we asked Ruth if Ruth if how is that move how is uh, geometric horizons working out with this exact argument? This is the point that Brian was and Adam for that matter were going back and forth with Ruth if for what, best part of a year, and all I do is take the piss out of him. How's that geometric horizon working out for you? Why do you think I say that? Because well, he hasn't got a straight line to anything ever. Yeah, it didn't sink in three years ago when QE told them all. Uh, you realise you're annihilating your own claim with this claim of refraction in rebuttal. This destroys everything you will ever claim from here forward. Yeah, well, I'm going to make damn sure they know about it from here forward when they need a straight line or an angle. Uh, you haven't got one. What, you think we need to move but... on with how you do dip? No, you haven't got a straight line. So that is the end of your argument. Always. And it's never going to go past but... that point for me. Ever. Well, well, I would be a bit different about that than what you said, Nathan. Because within their model, the claim is not... See, they all thought the claim was that the line of sight is bending. That's only after you've brought this scenario, let's say, orthographically in a diagram, back to a geometric globe. In their model, because their horizon is all claimed to always be refracted at some rate over 6R, that it's not the line of sight that's bending, it's that it's the globe out that's unbending to give you a straight line of sight to a target that would have been and should be well behind a geometric horizon. So uh, when they bring up over 6R, they, are, they think that, the, like for years, they th thought that that meant that the line of sight was bending over the curve. That's no, that's a diagram that when you bring it back on. to a geometric globe, you, the line me, looks like it's bending. In reality, you, the overcome, That's not according to you, Brian, the, 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 you're legitimizing the fact that 7 over 6R is exactly as described. It's unbending the radial value. It's making it bigger. That's what it's doing, isn't it? Unbending Earth. Yes. Making it less curvy, right? Not bending out any light through any air. Well, we can't have it both ways, Brian. You know, that's, that's where... That type of response is what we would be saying to them. No, 7 over 6R is a derivative of an R value. It's got so all to do with anything to do with light bending. It's merely a derivative R value. Right? And you've re rephrased it correctly so. You're unbending Earth. You're not bending light. Yeah, but that's not a rebuttal for them to say, no, well, in geometric principles, when we're looking at the horizon to get an angle, our globe Earth only unbends the Earth. Therefore, I've still got a straight line. That's your that's that's your perceived response to this. Well, yeah, because they have to. The reason they have to have to do that is because people do, in reality, see in straight lines. So when you can see an object in a straight line from the shore that mathematically should be well hidden by their Earth curve, they have to unbend their globe so you could see that. Yeah, but they're calling that. And that's that, what it is. It's but they're calling the that. Terrestrial yeah. refraction. They're, they're, they're calling it and labelling it and assigning it to the effect of the light reaching your eye by way of a bent line. That's what's being described. Now, while the mathematics of the Earth curve calculator just derives something from the R value at 7 over 6 of the rate of it, doesn't mean that that is what they are claiming is happening in reality when they transpose it onto reality. That is, and it's in the name, refraction. They're claiming it's the bending of the light. I know what the maths well, does, but that's our overcome, not their rebuttal. 
Yeah, but they, they, what they call refraction is a, mathema is a mathematical geometric change. It's not anything to do with atmosphere, uh, their atmosphere or temperature. Yeah, but, th but that's our line. Yeah, they, but that's our line, not their rebuttal. Yeah, but th th this is the point. They don't know their own model, and they haven't done. <laughs> and when uh, they argued with me when I showed it. Go on, Kiwi, you want to say something? Yeah, I did, because that's what I was first going to say when we started this discussion. You, Brian is assigning them a model, which most of them think is actually true. So Brian can argue with them within their horseshit. <laughs> so Brian can have yes. a <laughs> eat, eat your heart out, Anthony uh, Riley. Like that. Eat, eat your heart out, Sleeping Warrior. Yeah, uh, but I, I allow them the mathematical not globe, uh, geometric globe, not not measured globe, but only mathematical. And then I go straight to their over six hour claims. Because, you know, the, for instance, you know the Polaris. No, uh, your latitude with uh, Polaris fit the globe. Not if you have a constantly, like, never mind the angle issue, right? Someone is off me up there. Never mind the angle issue, right, that they can't use. Their horizon is constantly refracted. So besides having to know the distance to your horizon right on a globe at that very minute, if you have a refracted horizon, you're not going to get your correct latitude because latitude for them involves no atmo day. For them using Polaris and latitude, they need a geometric horizon because they have to back engineer right, flat earth, which elevation angle measurements to Polaris, which use mean sea level yeah, and the I, sea I horizon. That. But what you're doing and what QE is pointing out to is you're giving it them and then showing how the one that you've given them, which is their their geometric horizon in their model, I'm not denying that, that it is, you know, you're not straw manning them. It is their claim. But when you give it them back after we've already debunked it so that you can say that doesn't work with the dip in reality when it's just a height above the sea level, it's not an angle to the, ge the geometric horizon I've just given you back based on the unstretching of a globe Earth. Oh. It's not the light bending, it's the globe Earth unstretching you're giving them all that. No, I'm not giving them the geometric horizon. They never get that back. They <laughs> never give them everything back. else. Just give them the R value. No, no, because I'm used. I'm working off I of over six R claim. Yeah, I get that. Brian's an One sec, Hugh. One sec. One sec. One sec. Just one sec. I'm not decrying what you're doing, right? It frustrated me with with um, Sleeping Warrior when he did it because. The, the message at the time was, we don't beg the question here. Now, I very rarely say that. I mean, it's not like someone's going to trim out an old clip of me saying it in the last two weeks and say, hang on, I thought the standard was you don't get to beg the question. Is Brian begging the question? And is QE with his modus tollens? What's going on? It's like, well, obviously there's an exception to every rule. But back when I was trying to detail the fact that you just have to accept that they're begging the question from the outset, the entire thing is assumed from the very first thing they do. If you're trying to make that point and then next breath is... Well, if the Earth's a ball from Anthony, it kind of ruins the point. Well, now that we're well beyond that, it's perfectly acceptable for you to sharpen our knowledge with how the dip correction doesn't and cannot work on a sphere when they're in that paradigm. But to get them there to make your point, you have actually kind of got to give it them. And, you know, I'm not trying to argue with you. That's just how it's got to be. I know that. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do it or, or re refine your argument in the way you are. It's good. Just so you know. Well, the, uh, what I, I wouldn't consider what I'm doing is begging the question. Because I'm just using their mathematical... You're just an enabler, man. You're a ballpark enabler. Enabling. I'm all enabling. I, I, enabling. I, I, I won't go as far as begging the question. Are you I, begging I, the question? That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. You're, that? you're doing it on their behalf. You're begging the question for them. You don't have to like it, Brian. That is what you're doing. But I, Nathan, I always know that I'm better than them. Sorry, Nathan. No problem. Nathan, last two slides of Master B. Can you refer to them? What, are they depicting Brian as a Baltard enabler? No, no, no. <laughs> and you're off topic. The Irish, the Irish get a pass. Okay, got the first one with a curve to Jason and right angle okay. to a baseline. Good afternoon, good evening. Yeah, the figure two, the angle measured with the sextant is in reality one corner of a right triangle formed by you. That would be the navigator, the celestial body, and its geographical position on Earth. 
my gosh, the GP of the sun and the GP of the observer formed a right angle triangle. Next slide. It can't work on a ball. That's why it's always the sextant from hell, the equatorial plane. So when this guy came on today, it didn't matter how much he wanted to wordsmith his nonsense. Bottom question or bottom line question is, in the books, where's the angle and the vertex origin? Center of Earth, where you have a plane, an equatorial plane, where you get a right angle, never from the surface. Can we get yeah, back we, to uh, Brian being oh, a ball turn enabler? Yeah, He's I'm okay with that. Boy. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> because, because what I do, and I, I will comment on that in a minute, Tens, because there's something I want to say. But what I do is I take their model and I show it to them and use it again. Wait a second. Wait a second. Uh, stop. Stop. You take their model. Uh, can you show that? No. I can't. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it doesn't have to exist in order for you to be able to show somebody. Yeah, yeah. I, I, okay, I, I can't show you their model, but I take claims that are connected to what their model is, whatever it is. Oh! <laughs> you abide by I, the presuppositions. That's just what being it actually mean. Is. Look, if Brian wants to beg the question and enable Baltards, let him. I, I I will go with enabler. I'm not begging the question. <laughs> Anthony, I can't let that slide. You absolutely are. Hold on, I can't let that slide. You absolutely are begging the question when you say I'm just taking their model. What taking their model? <laughs> That's begging the question. That's what it is. That's why me and QE laughed out loud when he said it last time. It's absolutely begging the question on their behalf, whether you like it or not. In the same way, Modus oh. Tollens is. Right. In yeah, other words, okay, right, wait, you, let me just try it differently, much Brian. Better at it than Anthony. Just let me try it differently. He is an Irish Anthony. Hold on, hold on. Let me just try it differently. You know, you know when they told QE that Modus Tollens, the if P statement, was a straw man, and we laughed our tits off because that's their claim being offered up by QE on their behalf. Well, you're doing the same. You're begging the question of a sphere in the first instance to explain how it doesn't work with dip correction. But you can't just say, oh, I'm just enabling them to beg the question. If you're the one saying, if Earth's a sphere, that is you begging the question yeah. on their behalf. Oh, oh, okay. okay, I'll accept. Okay, I, okay, I can see. I am begging the question. We don't beg I the do question here, Irish. Better than Anthony does it. <laughs> I'm doing it better than Anthony does it because I am, I've been told the same thing by the ballers when I make videos about their model. Sorry, uh, the model I can't show. Are they telling you it's a straw man? man? Like, yes. They're Unbelievable. They're saying you're straw manning us. Like, that's not how it works. When I show them and I show visual moving diagrams of what they have to claim. Unbelievable. And then they call them straw Isn't it nuts? Well, like, like Chikey earlier, I'm not talking about baseline. Uh, this is a specific baseline-based debate. <laughs> you know what I mean? And when you offer up their claim to show it don't work, why well, you're straw manning us. What do you mean if Earth's a sphere radius 3959? Nobody's claiming that. It's straw man. <laughs> Just like, what? <laughs> uh, I, I got a correspondence. <laughs> why are you interrupting me? <laughs> Sorry. Go on, Brian. I got a correspondence on top of Glenn last night. Ruhif. <laughs> How's that geometric horizon working out for you, Ruhif? Go ahead. Yeah, he was uh, attacking you, Nathan. It, um, he won't mind me because he knows he wants me to say this. Um, he sent me the dip, uh, the refraction uh, table from the almanac. He said, just listening to yesterday's show, Nathan's saying an angle is two straight lines, but you can't get a straight line of sight on a ball. Is he saying that lines of sight on flat earth are straight? What is, what is it? No Atmo Day with laughing face. What's the story with the refraction correction table in the almanac? Do you he, accept that the light of sight to the star is bent by refraction? He, he thinks that atmosphere, sphere-shaped air oxymoron is something that I have to comport to. No. Well, he used the word Atmo, not atmosphere. So I think he's equivocating that he thinks because there is going to be refraction. He's pre-assuming there's going to be refraction. 
So on a flat earth, the line has to be bent by the refraction because he's thinking of, at, of at refraction as always bending the line down, if you understand. All right. No, I see. What, see, what, see what for he us, really thinks. You see, for us, we would apply principles that apply in reality that you can demonstrate, like Snell's law, right? Now, if you're going to detail light deviating from straight because it traverses a different medium, your atmospheric assumption gives you different gradients of the same medium to blag that you can have an effect like Snell's law when it's actually 7 over 6 of a radius. That doesn't mean that when we look out at anything ever, that suddenly I have to apply Snell's law because the light's going to traverse two different mediums. It doesn't. So absolutely I assume that the light is travelling straight, like it's dealt with by everyone always in practical application. But meanwhile, you've got bent lines through atmosphere always because it's not no atmo day for you, as you told us for the last three, three straight years. That means that you haven't got any straight lines through here. That's not my problem. It's not like I've suddenly got atmosphere to contend with. No, no, no. People do deal with lines that are straight. Other than you, when we point the black swan out to you, then you tell us that, what, is it no atmo day? Yeah, that's your rebuttal to us. Not my problem. Yours. Well, what he's doing is he thinks that the refraction that is in the almanac, that is in celestial navigation, because this is what they all have to do, is they pre-assume that that's over six or they don't realize that that's a uh, celestial. Well, they, they try to equivocate between the two and hijack, hijack it, basically. So Who are the people the who tiled it? I don't assume that that's refraction. I, I assume, don't either. I assume that the effect is the stars slow down as they reach the horizon. The rate that they are reaching the horizon decreases. That's a decrease in rate. Atmo what? Refraction what? What are they talking about? The stars slow down as they reach the horizon. That's what's actually happening. Why it's called atmosphere in the almanac, I don't know. That's not what they're dealing with. They're dealing with the lights that they're looking at slowing down as they reach the horizon. That's it. Atmosphere? Refraction? Um, no. Well, I think that um, they've done a pretty good job at keeping us away from them getting to the point where they have to affirm the consequent. The only one that wasn't successful in that is um, straight, straight head Bob, uh, because he actually pointed out that the stars, you know, are so far away that uh, it doesn't matter where you are. They, it's, I can't remember exactly because I'm trying to remember his diagram, but it's like uh, parallel, parallel, uh, parallel hypotenuse. Are you talking about Bob's hole? Yeah, yeah, the horror value. <laughs> because that, because the, that's where the guy today was trying to get to, Cali, because he's he's basically reversing the burden of proof by by trying to ask us. Well, when you create a horizontal in the air, how do you think you can do that? Why doesn't the angles to the stars change the higher up you go? Is is what he's trying to get to. I don't know. I don't care either. <laughs> Was I making a claim about it? Does it matter? I mean, it's sometimes I get the impression that these people want to debate with the process of celestial navigation. Because it's not mm -hmm. Nathan's celestial navigation. It's not Nathan's assumption that we use straight lines. It's celestial. It's the process of celestial navigation. Saving lives. That's what it is. It's not me. It's not requirement of me to justify the straight lines that are used. It's him to justify, after three years of telling us they haven't got any, to get one when he can't. Ruh, if that is. Right? Hence me asking, how's that geometric horizon working out for you? Maybe I need to remind you that there's this argument where you all told us that you got bent lines to everything always. Did you forget, Black Swan, you telling us how the lines are always bent and how buggered that leaves you? Yeah, I think you have forgotten, eh, Rufy? Oh, well, there you go. I just reminded you of why we ask you. For your geometric horizon, you can never get a straight line to, ever, in any circumstances. And how that really isn't a problem for me, and it especially isn't a problem for a process called celestial navigation that is applied in practical terms. Unlike your bent line in atmosphere that only exists in some model that we have to reify on your behalf in order to argue about bloody Brian. Can Eli, uh, can Eli, uh, Eli, repeat what you just said, please, what they say. Yeah, um, 
So it's like they believe that because you create a horizontal in the air, that it's not related to the ground in any way, basically. Okay. Well, that's a concession. That's a total concession because, oh. well, all right, go on and then I'll go. No, well, I, I thought you were going to go in a direction. Why are we taking it up in the air? So we went from a mariner sextant where we're trying to find our position out on the ground. Now we're in the air, and um, that, that's why they have the ball. Yeah, yeah. It's it about to launch into the fact that they're, they're acquiring a, a dingleberry earth with a tangent plane by having a hot Bob's Hall straight line horizon out, you know, that they're establishing. Okay, but he's saying, Tenth is saying that that's a concession because the ground positions aren't on the ground anymore. It's out in the air. So that's a concession. It's worse. Yeah, it's worse than that. It, more, it, 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 okay. it yeah, let me... demonstrates a lack of understanding, doesn't it? And demonstrates you're not doing celestial navigation. If the things aren't related to a GP, and all you're doing is taking an elevation angle. If you want to take an elevation angle off a plum and describe it from 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 that plum, that's absolutely fine for the elevation angle. If you want to do celestial navigation, everything is based on that baseline. That ground position that flat baseline that all the calculations angles and then circles of equal altitude are based and worked from if you don't want to do it on the ground you're not doing celestial navigation thank you uh nathan four slides in master b just loaded with the figure one dash two being the first All right. What's the purpose for height of eye, which is dip correction, and refraction, uh, which is temperature, water, and air uh, affecting the star at low altitudes? What's the purpose? That's not refraction. That's celestial, not terrestrial. That's just no, air. not celestial refraction either. But I know on. it's not in a different medium in the sense like a straw in a cup of water. I get you. But let me just go with what the purpose is for is to get a correct altitude to establish a right angle because it all must coincide with the celestial horizon that's where everything emanates from so no matter what the corrections are they're all flat earth corrections because you need to match and coincide everything with the celestial horizon. Look at this image. You've got observer's eyeball above the ground with a bubble sextant establishing a horizontal with a spirit level. That matches the celestial horizon. Then you got this thing called the geoidal horizon, which is a tangent plane on top of a dingleberry, which is surplus to requirement. Well, that establishes a coinc uh, it, it coincides with the celestial horizon where you see a 90 degree box. But that dingleberry surplus to requirement, what's that doing there? Next slide. In the inertial navigation systems, it's also referencing that level plane, not anything to do with the surface. Next slide. In a bubble sextant, well, that looks like it will coincide with the plane at the equator. Sure. But guess what? There is no dip correction when you use a bubble sextant which is an ax to the head of yep. blowers. Yeah. Because guess what? You're just saying it's already horizontal to form the right angle that you need. And then this next slide, where does it emanate from? The plane of the horizon all the way to the celestial sphere where the stars are. It's a flat plane. You need a right angle. All the corrections, whether... They say refraction or dip or whatever, yeah, to form a right angle so you can subtract from 90. Where is that from the surface of a globe? Never there. You want to make a well, point, Brian? It's worse than that. Yeah, yeah it's worse than that. It's worse, than, yeah. it's worse than that. Yeah, because <laughs> they have to claim, right, incorrectly, that when there's a guy in a boat at the equator, that Polaris is at zero because he is at the point where their geometric horizon that doesn't exist is just about to completely block Polaris. But a person in an airplane six miles above that person flying directly over the equator will also have a zero degrees to Polaris. 
the hell does <laughs> do you, do you see what I'm saying? You yeah, can't... the altitude. It's one of those things that I remember. Never forget Adam saying it. It's one of those things that we we can't explain. It's just how the majesty of the heavens present themselves to us. You can take the same elevation angle measurement to that star from the ground, and from thirty thousand feet, forty thousand feet doesn't make any difference. You still get the exact same angle. Why? I have no idea. It definitely won't work on a sphere, and it definitely needs parallel plane with the surface in order to do it at altitude. In other words, back to your diagram, I'll just bring the previous one up. When you're doing it with a bubble sextant because you're on an aeroplane, it works with the exact same angle, but no corrections needed. Why? Well, because the ground position's still going to be below the line that you put it on in the air, this line. So with the sextant lined up with the bubble, that's supposed to be detailing him taking the measurement from a plane, although he's given it where he's standing. I don't think he is actually on a plane. But the point is that when he lines up this bubble, the ground position that he's measuring will be directly below the measurement point because the ground's parallel with the line that he's made. So therefore, you don't need to make any adjustment. But if the stars were in somehow or some way physical, as described in the heliocentric model, then you'd have an adjustment. Now, they try and get around that by saying they're an infinite distance away when you're doing celestial navigation and a set distance set by Kepler and Hugens when they describe it in heliocentric terms. But ultimately speaking, this effect of not having any alteration in the angle that you measure to the star, it's still above the same ground position with the same angle at any altitude, is merely... Uh, uh, what was it? How did you describe it, Adam? Something about the, the majesty of the heavens or something like that. It was really eloquent. I just can't remember exactly what you said. Well, thank you for that. I'm glad you... Um, uh, it was. Was. I remember him saying the majesty of the heavens. That's how we did yeah. it. He's probably he did. he did. But let me let me not <laughs> the simplicity of this is still escaping, possibly some. I probably not you guys on the panel, but just look at that image, that first one of the last four, Nathan, the one figure one, two. Just look at that image. Tell me when, when it's up for the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Everything, all the corrections in the sextant the nautical almanac, everything is done so that it can reference the celestial horizon. Now, that is a horizontal straight 180 line. So guess what? That needs to be curved if we live on the globe because everything must match that. That's all the corrections are for. This is why just this picture destroys them. All the corrections for any reason is so that wherever you are on the surface or in the air above the surface with the spirit level must match that celestial horizon. Well, is that look curved to you? No. So we can't be living on the ball because it's not referencing curved. No, but they beg the question then, Ted. That's I don't care what they do. This is how it works. Yeah, but that's why I stay away from That's why I go straight to the marine sex and the dip correction. I don't this go near is, any of that. No, but this is it's, representing the dip correction. I just said it. All the corrections are to make it coincide with the celestial horizon. Straight. It, it just get there quicker. It must match that celestial equator. Horizon, does that look curved? No, but that's not the point. The point is that that's a damn be you're begging the question with me. I'm not begging no, any not. question. No, he's not. Right. Brian, Brian's well, charge of death with letting him beg the question. Yeah, he's not. When he describes <laughs> the celestial horizon, right, that's a flat plane with the celestial dome over you in your position on a flat plane. But that, that doesn't necessarily include the globe Earth at all. You can detail the celestial horizon with a flat plane and the um, uh, celestial, celestial the sphere. Model. Go on, Brian. Yeah, but but my point is is that with dip correction, they can't go to bubble sextants, they can't go to uh, artificial horizons. With the dip correction, they must reference the surface of the Earth. And for them to get their angle before, right, to, to bring to the centre of their globe, that will just be a hijack of the celestial dome model. For them to even do that, they've got to reference the dip correction, which proves <laughs> Earth has to be horizontal, has to have a horizontal baseline. 
But that's and what I'm saying. I never, that's why they don't, that's why I don't leave them past, leave them past that point. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I'm saying no matter if it's the mariner sextant where it's the surface of earth that you're using or a spirit level or the center of earth with the equatorial plane, all those three must coincide. And They're I all straight I, lines. You're right. You both are right. Listen, can I, before you close out, I don't know when you're going to close out. I want to, I want to shout out somebody that's doing yeoman's work. We have Divergent Droid when we're on your live stream, Nathan, and mine doing all, you know, the back office stuff. He's always posting links and everything to what we're talking about. We have another person in here doing that same thing for us. As soon as 10th posts anything in this, in uh, Skype, it's all of a sudden immediately in Discord. And if anyone posts anything in Discord, it's all of a sudden immediately for us to view in Master B. And that person that's doing that behind the scenes is a bee with a buzz. So yeah. we need a shout out for this, whoever this is, because that that's uh, that, it, it's going above and beyond the call to me. So I just want to recognize him. If you were here, I'd decorate you myself. Bravo, but I'd like to know how a bee drank an IPA. Uh, be with be with the slight non medically induced high, you mean? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Be with the buzz. You're fantastic, mate. Absolutely. You're a testament to how good the community is. We just and want to recognize it. Sensual. Again? Yeah, he's excellent. Yeah, we've got loads. We've got so many people in our community that are like that. Ah, commu this community, not flat earth. <laughs> <laughs> Right, on that note, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's after show possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of you in either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Premiering streams. Thank you for smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, joining as a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member, and all that good stuff. Once again, thank you to today's Discord and G Plus panels. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I will see you all in the next video.